right, so I think we can get started. Um, call the meeting to order. Is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? I don't see any. I have an addition to the agenda. Okay. Application for use of town highway right of way permit by Greg Pelchuk, via Rose Pelchuk. Application for what? Is it an ROW? Right away? Yeah, away? right away. Work in the towns right away. This. Yeah. Okay, so you got to file it with the town clerk. Well, we got to ask you to do it, or do you got to prove it? Yeah. And so, yeah, we just got to add it to the agenda, and then I could tell you about it. Okay, but he has to pay a fee, right? There's, there's, a, there's a, a, an application form. Is that it from the, is, is That's that the form from the, okay. from the website? Very hard to find. It's under zoning permits. It is hard to find. Very hard to find. Okay, good to know. Move it around. Yeah. Yeah, I have the actually the instructions. Yes. Yeah. The easy place to go, it's only the ordinance. So I found the ordinance in two different places, but to get the form to actually fill that out, it's under yeah. zoning permits. Fee of fifty dollars. Okay. And we have to have a number and I mean are yeah. you asking well, us to do this tonight? Well, I want to add it to the agenda and see if we could do it tonight. We can't the, leave him the, th the thing of it is, is that he wants to dump three loads of aggregate on the corner of a road because where they're fixing a driveway, the truck can't go across the bridge. Dump three loads on Friday, scoop three loads up on Saturday. So it's going to be there for 24 hours. So I don't even know if he needed to go That's through that thing formal we thing. To do a so, and I thought maybe he could just talk to Alfred. I don't know, maybe he doesn't need to, but... Just to I mean, be, this isn't permanent. This is just a temporary one day there, one day gone. Yeah, dump not three a loads. Change. He's not changing. Like so it sounds to me like it doesn't even. I well, I didn't know, so yeah. we were just trying to be extra. So if we need to add that to the agenda, we could talk about it some more. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess we can ask Toby and Alfred. I mean, do people do this routinely and don't get a permit? Well, it's not a permanent structure, it's, and you're not digging up the road. No, not digging. No, we're so not doing it. So I think anything. it's just you just have to coordinate with the road commissioner if it's that's acceptable. What, that's what I would say. Yeah. Um, the other two ROWs we have, they're actually you know they're digging up the road and putting down pipe and all these different things. Nope. So I don't even think you need he's to just using the towns right away to put some okay, dirt. So what we can do is when we're under. Highway stuff, which we have a lot of highway stuff. Okay, tonight. we could talk you could about just, this You more. could just let Alfred know, yeah. and if Alfie was here, we'd ask him right now. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we would. <laughs> Thank you. We could talk. Yeah, make it. Good yeah. Time. So um, Rose was just thinking that Greg needed a right of way permit to one day dump three loads of stone, the next day move it, and that to me just sounds like he just needs to let you know it doesn't need a permit. He's not digging up the road. He's not. Putting any pipes under the in the road? It's just pumping it there for temporary. Yeah, like one, one day. day. Dump it Friday, move it Saturday. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why he needs a permit for that. Just make sure. Thank thing. you for being so diligent. Well, I just said, you know, I don't know. You I don't need think a we, permit we would, for that. We wouldn't have anybody else do a permit. When we offer it. Look for that? Not for that. Not for that. Staging it there and going to pick it back up. Okay. So this. He made a little map. Okay. Good. I would just suggest if it, it's there overnight, just put some cones around it. Yes, that's a good idea. Yeah, he's going to dump it Friday and move it Saturday. Sounds like a non-issue. Okay. So, um, let's get started. We have two right of way applications. Um, they are listed on the agenda and they're in the folder. The first one is Sam Enfield, Aaron, however you say it, E-H-R-E-N Feld. Enron Feld. Enron Feld, if that's spelled correctly. Um, property address is East Hill Road. Aaron Feld. Yeah, and you've looked at yeah, this, Yeah, I didn't right? get a chance to talk to him like I was hoping, but I did look at the site. Okay, and do you have any thoughts uh, on it? It says dig and bury a water line from one side of right of way to the other. And he put a nice little map. He's going to hit ledge. I 
guarantee it because you're going to hit ledge there. So what happens so, when that when they hit ledge? Well, if he gets anywhere near, near deep enough, he can insulate it and still be fine. But mm -hmm. um, that's going to be an issue for him. Would you rather we wait to approve this until you've talked to him? Well, no. I think I mean I think we can approve it. We just he needs to know he's got he's going to he's going to hit ledge and he's going to have to come up with some solutions around that. Is yeah. that is that because we require it or because it's he, well we like we like utilities under the road to be at least four feet deep right and that's what he's and he would I'm sure he would like that too for cross protection right, right. however if you hit ledge he's either going to have to blast it or well that's why I'm wondering if we should wait until you talk to him because if he right. says he wants to blast it then that's going to make this permit different right. So I think we should. I just, I dug there and I know mm -hmm. for sure that there's going to be less there. We can't even hardly get a ditch along that side of the road yeah. in that area. So. All right. I think we should wait until you've talked to him because if he's going to have to blast and he wants to blast, then that's going to make the conditions okay. different. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. I mean, I tried, okay. tried to stop and see him today, but he okay. wasn't there when I went through. So. All right. So let's put this um, and Aaron Finn one on the July, I mean, yeah, June. I'm ahead of myself. June 24th agenda. And just, you can, when you talk to him, just, you know, let him know we were going to do it, but you wanted to give him this information. He should appreciate, yeah. you know, the information you have for him. <clears throat> All right. Um, Longo McLaughlin. Everybody has a name that I can't pronounce tonight. McLaughlin. Um, Apple Hill Road. Did you have a chance to? I did. You talked to him? Yes, I actually talked to him. Okay. Um, not sure of who his excavator is. He told me the name, but I don't, I don't recognize it. But it's pretty straightforward. He's just digging straight across the Boston Ford Road. Mm -hmm. and it's to bury a power. It's buried power wire. Bury a 200, is that 240? Did I see that? 240. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Amps. Amps, yeah. Power cable across the road at a depth of four feet. It's like six. It says four feet on the application. Oh, six feet is the... Six feet is the distance yeah. between that. Yeah, yeah his yeah, description, description says four feet. Four, four foot depth there. Okay, and um, do you have any... So again, typically if you can't get at least three feet for underground depth of underground power, you got to case it in concrete. And that's right. to protect the feet, any future digging in that area if somebody doesn't get Right. So if they're not able to dig down they four can't feet. They can get three, three feet per power. They can't get three feet. They have to case it in concrete. Okay, so if you can't dig down at least three feet, right? Yep. At least three feet. They must encase the line in, in a. And also, I noticed. Wait a second, wait a second. Must encase the line in concrete. 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 Okay, and what else? There's a couple of large trees that he is going to have to cut in order to put it where he's got it marked. Are they in the town right away so he needs uh, to get Neil to look at them? They're very much in the town right away. Okay. So ornamental shade trees? Uh, no such thing in California. Oh, okay, sorry. We don't have ornaments. Well, it's, one's a white birch and one's an ash tree. But they're large. I mean, they're 14, 16 feet, uh, inches in diameter. So we need to, he needs to contact the tree warden yep. about cutting trees, the trees, yeah. right? Uh, well, I don't know how that works if it's his own property. Is that in the right of way? It's in the right of way. It is in the right of way. Town's right of yeah. way. Yep. I think he has to contact the tree. Yeah. The yeah. tree warden during right. the whole ash project. Right. Yeah. Okay. Contact Neil Manka. Tree warden. Neil Maker before coming. 
in town right of way. Does Neil have to approve it? I think he has to. Yes. Yes, yes I know. He has to hold a hearing. So I would say before and about. Before sounds like it's like just giving him a heads up. Before. And he actually, it's more than that. Before cutting trees in the mm -hmm. town right of way. There is a, or just add like there's a, there's a, there is a, there's a, there's a procedure and a hearing process for cutting trees. Something so that he understands it's not just giving him all the blessing. Procedure. You probably explained all that to him. No, because he didn't know. Well, I don't understand it myself. Yeah. I mean, that's. Right. If it's his own property, I always thought it didn't have to go through the deal. No, I think it still does. I just know that at, mm -hmm. during the ash training, there was a lot of on town right away and the tree warden. Because he might have to, he, unless there are hazard trees, he's probably going to have to hold here. Right, and I think that's, that is Neil's uh, job is to determine if it is <coughs> right, a hazard right. tree or not. Right, right. Right, that's why he just needs to come. Really give permission to cut a tree. Right. If it's a live tree, he's going to say, well. <coughs> no, he would. Think, he has he to hold a hearing. Neil does. So but that's not your job. That's letting right. Neil take care of that. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to understand the, 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 the <coughs> of this. Because I thought it was if it was their own property, they could cut their own tree. No. Okay. Anything else on that one? Anybody have any questions? Or? No, I see they've they've had big safe there, so they've got underground telephone there that is all marked out for them. Seems like they're doing the right thing. Okay. Picture room. Good, good to know. There's the two trees, the white birch and the ash. Yeah. They're going right between them, so they both have to go. Yeah. Yeah, because if they dig that up, it's going to kill the Right. Okay. All right, so I can finish filling out the top part. Would anybody like to make a motion to approve this right of way for Longo McLaughlin with the restrictions as discussed? So, is there a second? Second. All right. Any other questions or comments on this? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Today is June 10th, and I'll pass this around for everybody to sign. They're going to sign that. Just return it to me so I can take care of getting it to them. All right. <coughs> I thought Peter Harvey was coming to talk about. <coughs> oh, excuse me, roadside mowing. That's what he said. That's what he said. So the only until he shows up, the only question I have is, did you talk to Doug, and is he all set to? Yeah, he should be starting. I would say next, either this end of this week or next. Getting the next, he's all set. He's finishing up with Middlesex. Okay. So I thought I'd ask him to be here for the second week in June, so he should be... So he should be maybe starting this week? Yeah. Because it's the second week? Okay, and does he have a, a time when he's going to start in August, or is that just kind of open-ended? I asked him for the first part of August as well. Okay, so that's yeah. all... That's... You got it all covered? That's, yeah, he gave me his word, so that's all I've got right now. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do it. Yeah. He, if he gave us a word, very good. We'll do it. Yeah, but second week of August, you're right, or second week of June is now. Right. This week, not next week. Right. And I only raise that because the turbo is it's it's out. It's it's. It'll, I don't know what well, I don't know what his timeline is for going to seed. Peter Harvey would know. I know. I mean, we get to we can ask him. Yeah. It's in the document I think that Toby gave us, and in something that Peter sent around that I looked at today and now can't remember. Do you remember, Toby? No. That's, yeah, that's what we need to be, you know, if, if it's all gone to seed next week, then. 
That's the right one. And, the, <laughs> and the problem is we're competing with other towns that want to do the right. exact same thing at the exact same time. So it's right. just one of those things that we have to deal with the availability of some of the cross And he was the only one who bid on it. We didn't put we it out the number. Yeah. Uh, we always them. give it to him. Because we really yeah. like him and he does a good job for us. And he lives here. Yeah. He lives here. Yeah. We, we used have, to. We, we used to. Bid, right. We, we used to put it out to bid, and we never got anybody but Doug. I, that's what some, I remember. We got some higher bids. In in the past. In the past. Right. right. But right. yeah, they were a lot yeah. higher. And he actually knows where all the invasive plants are and all the issues because he's done it for so long. Right. It's, it's a great asset to have. It's no, it is. As long as they get there before they go to sea. Yep. They tell the sun to stop shining and they'll come back. Hmm? Say what? Say, so tell the sun to stop shining and they'll just hold back going to see. Yeah, okay. So the days before you move on. Mm -hmm. um, we approved this curb cut permit, I think it was last meeting, for Chris Nuff. Or Neff. Oh, Neff. Yep, yep. Um, so Gene Bowen has started the work. So I went to talk to him. Or he came to me first, actually. Who, Gene did? Gene did. Yeah. Says they don't want to put a culvert in there. I said, well, Gene, that's the permit that calls for a cup of power here. So I went and met him there and looked it over. We've come up with another solution. Why don't they want to put a culvert? Uh, they're pinching pennies, I guess. I don't know. But so I said, he wanted to bring the water from this, this new driveway over to Doug Grout's old driveway, the house that he sold. And so that culvert is not in good condition. I told him that. It's been there 40 years. That water won't accept this water. So I said, go talk to the new owners of Doug Grout's house and see if they'll, if they're willing to pay to get a culvert put in there. Gene's going to do all the work, but they need, that culvert needs to be replaced. But why should the people across the road have to they put in? They're all agreed. They're all agreed. I, I talked to Gene today before I brought this to you. And there, he says they're all in agreement to, to have it done. I don't know. I wanted the water to go. Right. South. I don't think we should do that. That doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't seem like the right thing. Well, I mean, I it's nice that they're all agreeing, but. Well, maybe the new driveway is paying for it. I don't really know. He just said that they were going to go for that. I would at least want to hear from them. Yeah, I think if they want to come up with a different plan, I think they need to come and talk to the board. Okay. Um, to their work so I mean, I don't. I, mean, I don't want to be miserable about it, but no, I know. I mean, we're basing our decision on your recommendation because you know where right. you want the and water you, to you go. Know, what What they're proposing is to change the water is fine with me. I mean, I think it'll work just as well. Mm -hmm. So I sort of agreed to it because I don't. I mean, I have to, water has to go somewhere, yeah. and I have to. Yeah. I'm responsible for that water, so. By him changing that culvert, where now he wants the water to go, it's going to be fine. Then why don't we ask them, I think maybe he needs to file an amended permit application and get these other people to sign, I don't have one in front of me to remember what the, mm -hmm. and get those other people to right. sign off and have some kind of written agreement mm -hmm. before they do this. How about yeah, that? And, I agree. And I don't think it's a bad idea to have them come here and talk to us. It's like, what's your idea? Why are you doing this? Right, or at least put it in writing. Yeah, yeah. yeah the last thing, last thing, the last thing any of us, including you, Alfie, want to happen is to is to discover that the telephone game got it wrong somewhere. Right, <laughs> or that oh, we never agreed right. to blah blah blah. Right. So I'd like to see them yeah. do an amended. They can just use the permit so application that's online. So essentially, ask him for the agreement in writing. Right, and then right amended. He's telling me it's a it's a verbal agreement between the two homeowners. Uh, well, but they, right, but they can right. use they can have them fill out the curb cut application again mm -hmm. with this new idea, and mm -hmm. we'll issue a new decision. Yes, and let me let me add to that. The reason that's important is when they go to sell, part of a, part of a title search we talked about is looking at the permits, and. That'll be recorded. I, that'll be recorded. I wouldn't actually, as the attorney, go out and look at the site, but anybody could, and the site would be not consistent with the permit with no record 
of why that's the case. And that could, it, it's not very hard for that to be a real problem. Right, especially. It, it protects them. Okay. It well, protects, protects them. It protects everybody, including the town. Right. Okay. But it, I yeah. have a question. Are you going to waive the fee? or? Are they, no, yeah, we'll waive the fee. Okay. Yeah, they don't have to pay again. Yeah. Okay. But I think you can say it protects them for the work they're doing to be consistent with the permit that the select board approves. And this way, no it's, in, it's in writing. We sign off <coughs> on it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's mm -hmm. just cleaner that way. I think mm -hmm. you, you guys agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Back to we were just talking about roadside mowing, Peter. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought it started at <coughs> seven thirty. I just checked. No, no, seven. That's all right. My fault. That's all right. You sent me the agenda. Yeah. Agenda. Um, so we were just talking with Alfred. He's got Doug Grout all set. Doug should be starting um, the first mowing this week, uh, the first roadside mowing, and he's doing two this year. And he'll do another one sometime in the beginning of August. Alfred's got to get the dates from him on that. So we budgeted this year for two mowings. You did that last year as well. Right. Well, we didn't budget for it, but we did it. You did. It. Right. So this year we budgeted for it. Um, so, you know, I guess it's, you wanted to talk to us about your idea of not mowing on the roads the same as last year. Same as last year. Yep, excluding the same. And you asked me to go talk to all of the uh, neighbors. Yep. And I did. And um, there was one in your email said, there was one person that told me definitively that he does not want to continue last year's no mowing policy because he does not want to go against the road commissioner. Yes. And there was another one who doesn't want to do it. And I haven't heard from a third person yet. But other than that, I have heard from... Um, I, I've uh, been to 35 households. I've talked to people at 35 households, and I've taken notes about their concerns, and I put them, they've, uh, most of them agreed to be on a, an email list mm -hmm. that I'm calling uh, Four Roads, because there were four roads involved. And, uh, <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> and so I have two reports that I've already sent out for the two times that I've been out, but we've got seven or eight people that are pulling, seven people I think, including me. Oh, so you're not having to do it all by yourself? No, nope, no, nope. people that, this has been, you know, this is the third year I've been pulling and this is the second year uh, that people have been getting involved. So what are you gonna, what about the people that don't want to be part of this? But they live on the road, what, what, is, what did you come up with for a solution? Um, I don't think there is one. I think it's, you can or you can't. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if you, you know, if you if you skip over somebody, um, or if you go into some place, then you're going to drag the seats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you uh, can you get your crew, seven or eight people, nice size crew, to pull pull the chervil from their area from there? We're going to first, and then Alfie can mow. Um, the well, problem with that is the seeds sort of settle everywhere, and that, so that's like if um, I think you're going to have problems if you when you do your second mowing anyway, you're going to spread more. Now Lucy just came home up to East Mount Billiard, and she said that they're they're not mowing places where it has trouble. I don't know. I haven't talked to them yet, but we did go to uh, Maine, which cut into my time putting this together. But my great aunt, my aunt, my old aunt, is over there. I promised her I'd be there. And a month or two ago, and, and uh, we noticed that in Maine and in New Hampshire, there's no turbo. It starts about a mile on Route Two, this side of the Connecticut River, and then it gradually builds up to when you get to Marshfield, it's solid on both sides of the road. It's, it's almost like uh, the Japanese knotweed snow, where you can't see out of the bicycle path. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to be talking to as many people as I can, and I, I already I think sent you. Uh, the, the, one, the two women down in Randolph that did the study. Um, yeah, we have. Yeah, we have. And that. so I, I've done that. Um, but people are very enthusiastic about it. One person said, "I can't wait to run over the stuff." Now, what about um, 
the issue we had last year where people wanted to make sure that they could have visibility out of their driveway and the burdocks and all that. There were, there were two people um, that requested that and not the burdocks but the visibility. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two there. It, it, Janet Ansel comes and I haven't heard back from her yet. I left her the information and she mm -hmm. said she would get back to me. And, uh, but she was concerned, she's concerned about the burdock more than the chervil. Um, then um, Sue Kilgren emailed me this afternoon and uh, she's agreed to it, um, but she wants to figure out something to do about the burdock. Mm -hmm. uh, I offered to um, hand scythe uh, Sue's uh, burdock, uh, not burdock, but her, her line of sight. Mm -hmm. um, I think the bigger problem in their house, in their driveway, is the tree branches coming down rather than the stuff coming up. Make the tree branches come down. Yeah, well, that's not for us well. to. Pardon? It's not, I guess that's not for us to decide, but. Well, it's, and then, um, and then the only other one uh, is uh, Kent, who changed his mind. Kent. And uh, Kent Morris. And he'd said yes uh, last week, and then over the weekend he uh, emailed, he called me up and said no. Um, he agreed to the not mowing? He initially agreed to the not mowing. And now he wants it mowed. And now he wants it mowed. And that's it. it. And then, and part of the problem is we can't have Doug kind of do, from my understanding, like to do these hit and miss think so. pieces where people want something cut and other people don't. I mean, that's just. I can tell you that um, three years ago, or four years ago actually, three, uh, three years ago, four seasons ago, there was only a clump about five feet wide down mm -hmm. by my corner, and now it's in it's up past my driveway and into Walt's field. And it's off the road by uh, 50 or mm -hmm. 70 feet, um, and that's and it just it destroys the farmer's land, according to that article you said. Yeah, you can't. Uh, you can't. You hay can't. will grow. Well, the hay will grow, but you can't bale it because it's, it's so this. wet that it'll mildew. It'll, it'll well, and then you're, and then it's also. And then the cows the won't eat it, it. Right. and the seeds are in it, and, and we're not. You know, it, there, I haven't heard a consensus yet about whether the cows or even goats down not barrier can uh, pass the seeds through and uh, redistribute them. Yeah. They do some seeds, and I don't know yeah. about chervil. Mm -hmm. But I'll be working, uh, and I'll be writing these reports um, every time I go out, which is going to be two times a week. Um, uh, I have the worst area, um, my corner that's mm -hmm. expanded and grown out. So it's going to, um, I think if you start mowing Old West Church, for instance, it's going to go right down the road. And if you turn around and come back up, and it's already done, you can't corner. Is Old West Church in the no mow zone? Yes, Old West Church, Fowl Road, uh, this Pond Road, and uh, Sparrow. Pardon? Sparrow. Sparrow Road. Yes. Yeah, I know. I went. Just, I went. I drove up there last year to try to mm -hmm. figure out what well will look like and so on and so forth. So, Peter, the people who are saying no, what is their expectation? Yeah, is, is, is there expectation that that you know one veto can kibosh your so. your effort, or do they or do they are they community spirited enough to understand? You know, my vote is no, but I understand I might yeah, I might lose, and and you guys will pull my turbo and hand scythe for me. Well, I talked to Ken about. That. Okay. And because he's got plants between County Road and his house, right? I pulled twenty plants, like fifteen or twenty plants there, um, and um, so he's got to get it right away. Uh, but I I talked uh, to him and I offered to decide even if you decide not to mow, even though he's you know um, he's against the, the mow. Yeah, I mean we just we want to make and sure. And he said no, he doesn't want. He, he said he would take care of himself. I don't really know, just what. Yeah, I couldn't convince him that I could come up and sign it in a few minutes. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 so the so he, so he, so there's three folks that are concerned about the not mowing. There is there are three folks. Janet's concerned about the burdock. Uh, burdock. Yeah. Uh, and then um, Sue's con well, and then Sterry she said, "I'll do whatever help he tells me to do." And then <laughs> got that, Alfie. Oh, he said, "Whoa!" He said, "You are reading them really good." He pointed out that drain that goes across the road. 
Oh, so yeah. and into the pond. So I just want to have I just want to have for the minute and who is opposed to the no mo zone? Can you just can you just answer that question? It's uh, Janet. I don't know about Janet because she has not. So Janet answers the question mark. Yeah, it's just Sterry and that I have. Leno, Leno, and Sterry Leno, and. Um, but if Alfred goes in and talks to him and says Sue Keller and. Oh, uh, Sue Keller and said she would go for it. Oh, okay. okay. And when, they, when their concern about burdocks is that when you don't mow, then the burdock has a chance to grow and they like the mowing to manage that. Because, well, that well, last year it was an issue because she said the burdocks were so high, it affected her sight line getting out of the driveway. Which, okay. which was that? Uh, killer it. Killer it, okay. Yeah. So we need to make mm -hmm. sure we take care of that. If I, if that I hand side it, that's not going to carry seeds down the road. Okay, so I guess I'm just looking for some clear answers so we have it in the minutes so when somebody gets a call so killerins are okay yep. and you're going to hand side there I, I only got an site email line. from them i talked to them briefly a week and a half or something ago with stan and you know, the date i talked to them was yeah. there. and and so we haven't ironed out the details that she does want to work out something okay she so has three concerns she has three concerns the burdocks yeah. um she uh Cars not being able to park off the road. I think she's. Let me find what she said. She wants a line of sight for safety. Uh, no, that's the wrong one because it's on six sheets here. Wants to address thick roadside greenery, burdocks, and narrowing the road results in parking issues around Old West Church and Kent events. And I have her email here for you if you like it. Okay, that would be great. Okay. <clears throat> And the other one is Kent Morse, but you're gonna, but he's a, he's against no mowing, but is okay if we don't. Is that my understanding? You said no. he'll take care of it. He himself. said he would take care of his line of sight himself. Okay. And then the third one was Janet Ansel that we're waiting. We're waiting to hear from Janet Ansel. The third one was Sterry. Sterry Lino. Sterry doesn't have any. Um, uh, so Sterry doesn't really have a strong opinion one way or another. Well, but he yeah. doesn't have any land. He doesn't have any bridge with any with any growth. Right, I was going to say he's right by the. Well, spot, yeah, he right? just has a road. A parking lot. Right, he's a parking lot. Right, all, a lot all of the way along is in, Right, he's got impervious surface. Yeah, it, but it cars but, park on it, so. Right. You know, it's, um, okay. So I'm just trying to so, say, so we're clear in the minutes, mm -hmm. so when six, three months from now, when I get a phone call, mm -hmm. somebody's complaining, um, I'm going to go back and look at the minutes, and this is what was discussed at a select board meeting, yep. and you have done your due diligence in contacting people, um, I just want to mm -hmm. make sure we're clear. Yep. Anybody else have any thoughts? Our ideas how to make this better. Oh, Alfred. Oh, Alfred. <laughs> so I can't see him. Yes, sorry. I do. <laughs> so one question I have with this team of seven people. Yeah. Why can't you, ahead of the mower, go pull this chervil out, and then we can mow the, the lower floor? We, we can only pull out uh, plants that are strong enough to pull out where the, where the flower has gotten big. So what I can pull out today, or I can't pull out today, I have to wait three or four days to pull out. Um, um, so it's not like it all happens at once. It's not a, like a, a modern monoculture. So it so it's everything the same day. So it's, it's going to drag out for over a month. It matures at different. And then I think, and we'll find out. Different. But they but still talk spread. Through. Right, but the, the no, seeds are at the head of the plant. Hard to identify. Yeah. Hard to right. That's where they're from. But they don't. They stay there, and and so. So, oh, and they and they yeah. you filter down into stuff and, and your mower goes right down close okay, to Okay, so tell me what happens to the seed when it's in the road on the road surface and it's been pulverized by a tire. The, the Where is that seed going then? The seed after it rains, it's going right back into the ditch. It's going know? back into the same place and not spreading down the road. That's about the best we can do. This stuff roundup won't touch it. And we don't um, want to use roundup anyways. Well, but they've tried that. There isn't uh, an herbicide that'll uh, that'll take care of this. So another point that I would like to make is, when we grade, and that stuff is thrown in the road, it's very wiry. It gets mixed in with the gravel. It's very hard to level the gravel back out and smooth. It's very difficult when you've got weeds in the road mm -hmm. that are three, four feet long, and it gets all tangled up in the gravel. 
You brought this up last year. And it's I've a fact here. I do this watching it. I do this. I've been watching it, and, and the plants are gone in a week. They're not gone. They're still there. They, they may soften up or get be depolarized. Basically, I'm recognizing. You guys need to talk to the board, not Mm -hmm. So we don't get into so that. As, as, as you said last year, Denise, they're unrecognizable right away in a week. Mm -hmm. They're gone. They, they, they get ground up uh, by the tigers. Right, but if you're doing it in the morning and we come through in the afternoon, it's I, not all disintegrated. It's not. It's, it's still there and it's going to get all balled up in our gravel. I'm trying to talk to the, to the board. Uh, we only do it in the afternoon and the evening because uh, it has a, uh, a sap that reacts with the sunlight and yeah, it's I read more that. likely to give you a rash. Yeah. Uh, it's not nearly as bad as some of the other things, mm -hmm. but um, what we've got, uh, we also have, uh, what is it, cow parsley or something, the yellow one, on my corner, on all three corners. Yeah, that's Sharon's baby. And, that's, um, my that's my job. Cow yeah. Yeah. And wow. it's, and last year we had maybe half a dozen plants, this year we've got dozens. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'll be looking into pulling that up. Right now, it's not strong enough to pull out. Yep. It's, and after a good rain, it's a lot easier. Yeah. But the, so the roadside, where it still is in most places, is, um, is the gravel that's been knocked off the road, either, either graded off the road by the grader or knocked off the road by cars. So it's pretty soft stuff. And, and I've had very good luck with, uh, with pulling on the roadside. Mm -hmm. Horrible mess. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. All these invasives. Wow. Terrible. It's just, it's stunning to see how out of control this gets. And then you can't do a thing about it once it's really out of control. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, if it's worse than it is now, if, if it keeps on getting worse, I'll have to quit in a year or two. It, but it's, it's moved up mm -hmm. several hundred feet from where it was four years ago. Yeah. When it was just a few plants, relatively right. a few plants. These things don't have to move anyways, whether it's mowed or not. I mean, you're, you're saying it's your whole field, that whole field has got, got it. We're not mowing your field. We're only mowing six feet of the edge of the road. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so wait a minute, Peter, let him finish. So I'm not sure that, that mowing is the total culprit of this spreading. It's, it's spreading on its own. So, and, and I, I have to keep going back to that stuff being thrown in the road. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a very much a nuisance for the greater operator. Is there another way we can dispose of this stuff somewhere than other than? Can you put it in trash bags? Only if you've got an awful lot of them no. and dump trucks to put it in. And I don't know where you take it. No. But you don't yeah. grade the road well, lay every month. Long, lay it alongside the edge of the road, then, so it's not in the middle of the road. They have to crush the cars. Have to crush it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do the same thing. I put it in the road. We yeah. all do on Tucker Road. Mm -hmm. um, that's the parsnip stuff. That's the parsnip. And this is a. It's well, well, this is related to the chervil, right? Yeah. Chervil and parsnip. I think it's different. I don't know if they're. Or something. Uh, yeah, but but, Alfred and I, I hear I hear what you're saying, but to me this is, this is the hard work of working together to, you know. So you're saying if you come through later in the day. It's, it gets tight. It doesn't even get the next day. Even the next day, Peter says he works at night. Okay. The next morning, we do most of our grading in the morning. Well, it's okay. All long, but okay. in the morning, it's going to be fresh. It's going to be very wiry. But, it's going to get. But you don't. But that this is where this is where we have to work hard to coordinate. So so you know you don't grade every road in, the, in town every day. Like there's got to be some way. That so I'll just put the list, make a list of these no mo roads. I won't grade them until the fall. You just graded ours, uh, all three of them. No, I don't. I don't think that's the right well, no, attitude, I Alfred. Either, I, I think that if you know that this is being done on these roads, <laughs> if you can check and see when they pull, then you change the schedule for grading the road. I don't see. Well, uh, is that? How often, seem like a how often do you need to grade the roads? Is it every couple of weeks? Do you grade depends the on the weather. It depends on the rain. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think this is a... You've got, what, 100 miles, almost 90 miles plus to, uh, to grade? I mean, in the spirit of community involvement, and I appreciate what Peter and others are trying to do with the invasives, and I would think that the town, we should do our part with the invasives to try to not help them spread. The, best, the most, the, the, what we can do, we can do. Mm -hmm. And if you can, if, well, Peter can let you know. He can send you an email when you've pulled a bunch and if grading is on the schedule, then he change it. 
I can I can add you to the list and I send Put it in the list. pickup and bring it to my shop and I'll run over it in one safe spot. If that's what it takes, it needs to be run over. Put it in a pickup, bring it to my shop, I'll pulverize it with a bucket loader or grater or whatever, and it'll be gone that way. I just I'm having a problem with the stuff in the road. I just it's I hard think to grade the road with that okay, stuff all But why up. tell me why you can't change the schedule if you know that it's there. Because Mother Nature dictates the schedule of grading. But it's, if it's, it's the weather, it's when the road gets hobble is when it needs to be done. I, I, I get that, I appreciate that, but I think this is something we need to work on together. Mm -hmm. I am offering to, to expose the stuff. That's working together. It's it's I it's I not it's as a person who pulls that and now we're just down a rabbit hole of arguing. Uh, I, that's I'm I'm with Peter, I mean, when you've got a crew of seven or eight people, I'm so envious, Peter. We don't all work together. We work independently. Well, and also, you know, you can't, it's, it, it also what you have is, is and like we do on Tucker Road. Like, would Tucker, well, I haven't asked my neighbors, but I believe that the people on Tucker Road would be fine with putting up grading for a few days while we deal with our wild parsnip problem, which we do as a, you know, I mean, as a group. I mean, you, there must be places where you pull this chervil that you know it's it's out. Everybody's out pulling, and we don't all get out at the same time. And I bicycle it's six miles. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess in an effort to try to make this good. work, mm -hmm. and I, I understand and appreciate Alfred's concerns and frustration, but we need to work together. This is a town issue. We're all neighbors. We're all in this together. So, as I said, I appreciate Alfred's concerns. I appreciate what you and seven other people are doing. So, when you guys pull a bunch, maybe you can email these folks, and maybe you guys can all do it, coordinate doing it, you know, within a day or so of each other, and you can let Alfred know. Well, the Martins walk two miles, four miles every morning, and they do it when they see it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm starting to find it on their roadside. Okay, now. but see. But so they do it independently when they, they, when they do it. And, and we all, you know how hard it is to get seven people together. I know, but I think you need to explain the issue to them about the grading issue mm -hmm. to this group, this email group that you have and see if you can work out a plan. As I said, so that we're all working on this together. There doesn't need to be an argument. There's two sides to the story. There always is. Um, I, can you give me a hint as to what you think a good plan would be? Because I don't think you can get seven people out there twice a week for two or three hours. Can you set up a Google Calendar? Can you set up an Outlook Calendar where you can share? It's, I don't know, I'm just trying to it's think. It's a struggle to get the people out. You know, mm -hmm. they, they all have their schedules, and, right. and I, I just don't see that happening. The well, closest you're going to come to that is to go back to me do it by myself. Well, no, that's not and fair. I don't think, and, I, and, I, and right now we're building a community effort, and mm -hmm. it's really fun to see this happening. Yeah, it is. It's great. That's what I'm and, saying. It's great. I don't, I don't want, want to really frustrate that by making it too difficult. Right. Right. Uh, making it impossible. I right. Think, right. Right. No, I mean, I, I do. It's a great community effort. I applaud that. So I think the town needs to work cooperatively and support it. And support. Right. Now, if, if Albert could tell me when he's going to grade, but you're saying you can't because of the weather. Well, you, you, must, you must have an idea, Alfred, when you're going to be going over on that side of town to grade. When it's when it's probably that's when and I have time and the weather's right. That's okay. When so you, so you ride around and know that you're going to be grading these roads because they're potholy next week. You can't let Peter know, and he can let the other folks know. And I'll let it go for that. Yeah, day. but the thing of it is, is that Peter's not doing this all in. One amount of time. No, I realize that you're doing it throughout a month or so, or two months. Maybe. Oh, it's going to be at least a month. And and right. you know, so I've got volunteers. It's not exact time that that it's going to happen and be done, and then I can go do my job. I've How, got, what's, what's I've the got condition volunteers of, the condition? who are doing this on their own time. Right. So what's and the has got paid employees that he directs. I can't direct my volunteers. Right. So what's the condition of the roads there right now? They were just graded last week. So they shouldn't need grading again for what? Three, four weeks? I'll let them go for two months if you want. 
happens. No. You're going to have to quit. I mean, you're going to have to quit. I know, I know. Albert, we're, we're trying to work on this together. I am too. And if you let it go I'm for showing, a month. I'm trying to let you understand the other side no, of I, it. And I do, and I There's appreciate the other side so of it. There's people are going to be complaining about that. So let's see how things are in three weeks. Yep, yeah. okay, great. And, and I think if, if Alfred says, I want to grade this two days, then we won't grow trouble for the So let's get an update at our meeting on June 24th, how okay. it's going, mm -hmm. what shape the road is in, how much, I don't know how long this stuff takes to kind of go through its cycle so then the road grading isn't an issue. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a way to work this out. Mm -hmm. yep. So let's do that, mm -hmm. all right? Katie's got it in the minutes. You have a thought? Uh -huh. You want to hit somebody with your cane? <laughs> I uh, had enough pain for a while, so I don't want to spread any on anyone. Um, Peter, do you think your volunteers would be willing to record when they pulled? They do. They do. Um, and they well, report it to you? We do. What? They aren't as organized about it as I am. Mm -hmm. This is um, this is what was pulled, what I pulled, and what I saw on uh, the yeah, first that, report on June fourth. Yeah, Did that's you get in those? the. It's in the. Okay, and then the second report is um, is more condensed. I'm just figuring out how to do this. The first one was a page and a half. The second one is one page, so that people read it without getting glossy eye or glassy eye. Right. Yeah, I'm just thinking if you can somehow manage to capture more than less when people are doing this, mm -hmm. then a pattern might suggest itself that we could then work with Alfie and say. This is times when we see people are doing this. This is the time frames looking at. The question I would have for Alfie then is, are there particular areas that repeatedly from year to year you experience this problem that you've described? Or is it just anywhere where it's happening? You mean the problem with the with vines in the road? The vines in the road while you're trying to do the gravel and well, grading. Particularly in, in around Peter's house because he's the one that's been pulling it for the last couple of years. Okay, so that and is the, the area worst that. problem area and now your concern is, is expanding <coughs> to other areas as more and more people get involved in the project. Yes. Yes. Okay. But there's a thicker concentration around your house and, and in other areas. areas. Well, Lucy noticed coming back from Maine um, on Saturday was is that the intersections are the most uninundated by this. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're driving on Route 2 and Plainfield and Marshfield and, and going east from there, you see it, that you come up to an intersection, and I don't quite know why yet, but the intersections are just all three sides of a, two, mm -hmm. of a T intersection are uh, just full of the stuff. And um, my house is, my lot's the corner lot. Okay, so I just want to remind everybody that it's 10 minutes of 8. We still have a lot to do on the agenda, so can we come to some kind of, I like your idea of maybe Peter capturing, maybe people can send you an email, hey, I pulled terrible today, you write it down on your chart, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll ask Alfred to wait until June 24th to get an update so we know about mm -hmm. yeah. the condition of the road, whether it needs to be graded. I would turn that around and say, Alfred, you tell us when you want to grade and we won't pull. Okay. That, like, that's much easier to do than to get people to come out on a schedule. Right. And, and Alfred can do the schedule because you schedule your crew. So they would just said it. the roads are fine. They've been great. They so have. I'll leave the roads alone for a month. Okay. okay. You do okay. Your thing. All right. Nice. We're saying until that's June. We're, we're, for no. those okay. four roads, I won't. I won't Alfred, we are saying that we're going to get an update on June 24th. We'll see what the condition of the road is, what their status is with pulling this stuff, and take it from there. So mm -hmm. we don't want you to say that you're not going to do any grading for a month until we report back on June 24th. Mm -hmm. All right? Two weeks from today. Right. So does that make sense to everybody but Alfred? Okay, it's two weeks. <coughs> yeah, three weeks. Two weeks. Two right. weeks from today. Yeah. It's imperfect. It, it's in, we've said this every time we talk about invasives. There's so many tensions. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's imperfect, and we're all trying to figure it out. And I really am impressed and applaud the patience and the diligence of the work you're doing and, the, and your neighbors right and the, and all this stuff that you've put together for schedules and information you, mm -hmm. we thank you one of the questions i'll be asking them down at uh, randolph because i'll be going down there and talking more with my game last year yeah, we have to ramp here is 
how has this affected property values? This turtle in the fields that can't be used anymore. Mm -hmm. And good, good uh, they might have just their tax base might be falling. Well, that's a really good question to ask. I think. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. In two weeks. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and oh, can you put this on my. I need to get yeah, it. May I put these signs up then? Mm -hmm. All of my own expense here at the ends of the road. Because last year, after the day after you said I could put yeah. the signs up, I went downtown and made the signs. I got out by 10 o'clock. There, uh, uh, there was somebody coming down with a mower off the county road on Bliss Pond Road. And I stopped them in the first 30 or 40 feet. Because mm -hmm. that's where I was Okay, the so do we want to make a motion to authorize Peter to post the roadside mowing exclusion zone signs on the roads as he has described? Is there a second? Second. All right, further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, and I will email the, the list <coughs> then, uh, for tomorrow morning. Okay. And, uh, great, thank you. And maybe, can you put me on your email list so I can okay. keep up to date on what's going on? Yeah. All right, Hydro Cedar. Um, is that all set? It will be here Thursday. Thursday, okay. We wanted to, I guess the Conservation Commission had some questions about, and we talked about this last meeting, mm -hmm. and I can get Stephanie or somebody on the commission to give me their exact questions, but they had specific questions about making sure that the product that is, the chemical in the product that is sprayed is environmentally safe. <clears throat> Do you have any? Yeah, the dye is food grade dye, and you can eat it. Okay, because I know you know. Monsanto. So you can you can eat you can eat the grass. Well, Mon spread. Monsanto said their stuff was safe too, and years <laughs> later we find out it's not. So this is why we're asking. Well, it's food grade it's food grade dye they put in the, in the product. So if you can eat it, you can put it in the environment. Okay, and we agreed we're going to do clover, which is a great idea, instead of the hay. Clover is hay. Well, you, the you red clover or something. Clover. I mean, there's usually they use a conservation mix, so it's a bunch of different seeds. Okay, whatever that is, because you you suggested and, and good good for you that not to use just hay because it helps to right. spread invasive. So whatever it is you're right. planning to use, can you get me the name of it or? So the product that they that they put in with the seed that they spread is is is. Heat treated wood product. It's it's either wood product or paper. It's not hay at all. There is no there's no hay. It's, it's either it's all you know steamed or whatever wood wood pulp or um, or paper. Are you getting all that? Okay. So there's no hay in it whatsoever. The only seed that gets sent out is the seed you put in the mix. Okay. Well, that's what, what I'm talking right, about. What I was saying about the hay was we're using hay now, which comes from whatever field we, right. we get the hay from. Right. And that would be spreading unknown in the, right. invasive right. species. So Where the change mulch doesn't. There's no this you can you can put whatever seed you want to into it. Do you spray it on invasive and then you grow anymore? Um, no. no. It, it's food grade, so there's not it won't protect. It doesn't kill it. <laughs> Darn so far as we know. I'm so, so, so the seed there's, there's an engineered seed that the small player is using. And I've got the tag that tells that there's some engineer that designed this perfect seed for mm -hmm. it. it's a conservation mix. Can you? I mean, design is just different types of seed mixed mixed in together. Can you? It's a cocktail of seeds. Can you? So what is it like a list of ingredients kind of thing? Yeah. That maybe you can yeah, photocopy a tag, and a tag send. That tells all the different. Okay. Types can you of photocopy seed? that and email it to me, and then I can pass it off to the conservation commission so they have the rest of the information that they wanted. Sure. And then if they have any more questions, they can let me know. But we were we were good with that. We didn't have anything we had to approve. Right, you approved. Not this. No, no, no. I just wanted to circle back and see if you got it, um, and make sure we're all good with getting back to the conservation commission with the concerns yeah, I mean, that they I had. Yeah, back to them. To be honest with you, I haven't. But yeah. The, I mean, it's, it's well, I think if you if you send me that list of ingredients. And then I can send that to them and see if they have any additional questions. Does that make sense? Thoughts? Ideas? 
So they're still holding that truck that you asked them to hold, correct? Yes. Because I know you're working on it. I do think we need to move fairly. Yeah, well, we're just waiting for you to kind of. Well, I know. I couldn't get the value no, of the I truck know. while it was in the shop. But I don't. This is now at home, so tomorrow I'll have you come for the next day. Okay. And get, See, us, get us a value, a trade in value. So if I put this on the agenda again on the 24th, I will have all the info. You'll have all the info? Okay. Um, George Road Grant, that was not yet ready, right? No, but we were notified that we will receive it. We just have not got the official paperwork. So okay. that was a grant for the culvert on George Road, and I think the value was 165000 Okay. That All that stuff you sent ahead of time was, was really helpful. Thank you. Um, do we want to, is it going to need to be signed before the next select board meeting? No. Okay. All no, right. None of the work can start before July 1st, anyways. Oh, that's right. The new fiscal year. Yep. Great. Okay, so you had a bunch of um, <clears throat> other stuff to go through. All right, we have George Road grants and aid for FY20. So there's another round of grants for the work that we normally do that we essentially it's the, to get ahead of the municipal road. Evaluation. So this this uh, next year is uh, twenty one thousand. This is this thing that you sent to us, yeah. Right. And uh, you need to sign that you want to join into the program by July third. Okay. So. So this year we've done um, Haggett Road in Adamant, and that's mm -hmm. about four thousand dollars. We'll get out of this eighteen thousand that was this year and. We will work this month to get some more of that grant money before it expires on June 30th. Okay, but this grants and aid we're talking about now is going to be for FY 20. 20, 20 right. right. And, and a question I had written down, and then I realized I read the answer, we can't get reimbursed for the hydro cedar. Right. Because one, one of the things that they had here, that was one of the options. I don't know why we can't. They, it's in they the, decided who was eligible. There's only two towns that were eligible for machinery grants. Really? Okay. I don't, don't know what the criteria was. All right, so we don't need to sign this one. That's correct, because we're not eligible. But you're asking us to sign? Page three. Page three. And this would be for what roads now? The whole town. The whole town, okay. Were you, you were telling us, I think, what, what last year's grant was used for? So let so this current year ending on yeah, June 30th it, it is eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. We've only done four thousand dollars worth of it. We will do a bunch more, and essentially it's burn removal, ditch cleaning, uh, road surfacing for Crown, and um, replacing culverts. And if you look at some of the stuff Toby sent us, I think it's in the work plan that you're proposing for this right. coming summer after July one, correct? No, we have to no, use it before June. We're, no, we're in the work season right now. So right. This is for all the stuff we're doing. But this is the one you're asking us to sign is for right. the next 20. year. Twenty. But so some so of the this work I have to get done before June 30 is for last year's grant. Right. But I'm talking about the FY19 road work plan. That doesn't start. It starts now. Right. But some of that will be in this FY20. Correct. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. That's my that's my point. Um, okay. Are we going to use that whole 18, Toby? With, no. I don't know. It depends on how much we get done before June 30th. That's the goal, I'm assuming. Well, everything we do right now as far as removing berm and building, rebuilding crown and stuff, it's all eligible. We just have to track it and put in for the grant part of it. 
and okay. we have to identify roads that are connected that we're working on. I have a list of the roads that I finally got from uh, Central Vermont Regional Plan. So there's a list that lists the roads. There's a database. That Hydrologically I, connected roads or whatever. Connected roads mm -hmm. that are eligible for this uh -huh. grant and aid funding. So there's some roads if we're doing work on them, we're not eligible to get money from. So was this the grant we used when um, you did Apple Hill and Woodbury Mountain? No, that was different. That was a class four. It's a similar road erosion repair yeah. grant, but it was for a class four road, not for a regular class okay. three road. Okay. This is for the regular class three road. And it says indicate by checking one of the boxes the anticipated project completion dates. I'm assuming you want us to do June 30th of 2020. Correct. Correct. And when you figure out what those projects are, you'll let us know for? It's just going to be as we go. I mean, as you essentially, go. Okay. there might be a 600-foot section mm -hmm. on one road and a 300-foot section on another road and 800 feet on another road. I mean, it, it's just it's where the problems exist that we get reimbursed for. If they don't exist, then we don't get reimbursed. OK, so do we get, when Alfred does these clay boil projects, do we get reimbursed for those? It would depend on if that's a connected road or not. If it's not connected, then and it's not having, it's not in the, in the rated, not meeting the standards of the MRGP. Then no, it doesn't count. Okay, because I know this past spring, you know, the intersection of Moscow Woods and Jack Hill, you must have fixed that section at least seven times because of the clay boil. So that's what I was asking. Yeah, I mean, I don't know of a grant unless we did a class two grant uh, that would that would oh. support that. Okay, just we could take it out of our budget. We've done, we've done. You know, right. Well, I was just looking at Toby's years. work plan, and he has Marshfield Road, but I don't see Moscow Woods, Jack Hill on here. So I didn't know if that meant you didn't have time this season, or. Well, that's. I mean, we. That's a pretty good list. I don't. We don't want to. Right. Too high, but that can go on that list if you know if we get it, we get it. It'd be great. The, the Moscow Woods area that yeah. you're talking about. But a clay boil is not necessarily a road erosion issue. It's a bad base and moisture in the road. Mm -hmm. It could be there's no stream within 100 feet of the road, and so it doesn't qualify mm -hmm. for this grant. This grant is for connected roads. Okay, well, I don't want to hold up time. Yeah, we just need to sign it. Yeah. We just need to make a motion to sign this. We'd like to make a motion to approve the Municipal Roads Grant and Aid Program for FY20. So moved. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay. <coughs> I'll pass this around for people to sign and then we can give it to Toby. Vote. Oh, vote. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Sorry. All right. There you go. Um, FY20 work plan, which is great. Thank you for doing that. Everybody's had a chance to look at that, I assume. And any questions on the work plan? No. Okay. And then you wanted to talk about the York rate. <coughs> is it broke? It's been broke several times. We've had to weld it. Uh, it is. It was bought when John Singleton was in charge. Wow. So I'm going to say that's 10, 12 years. Uh, I use it a lot, particularly in the spring. I love it when I see the York break out. Yeah, it does a good job. Yep. It helps with the burn because you can, the rake will reach out over the edge of the road and mm -hmm. knock that grass and pull the gravel in. So it helps. There's many, many values to this rake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because of the edge of it and. <coughs> strong need for it. Yeah. I feel like we should probably uh, have one. A new one. A new one. What's the cost? What's how much one cost? Uh they're about thirteen thousand. And you want to take it out of this year's remaining budget? Perfect. Okay, we just so we got we just bought the hydro cedar that was thirteen thousand. Now we're buying a York rate that's thirteen thousand. So that, a good follow-up is the remaining budget. So as of May 30th, um, there was a remaining balance in the highway funds of $114,000. Yeah. 
Right. Oh. Say what? There was there was one payroll after that date. Uh, the payroll was twenty thirty first, so that number would adjust down a little bit to about one hundred nine thousand. So essentially, for the last month of the year, we have one hundred nine thousand. Yeah. But we still have payrolls in June, right? Mm -hmm. uh, one hundred thousand more. How much roughly is a payroll if it's normal hours? Well, we I can honestly tell you, I haven't had. An hour Forty hour that. payroll in months, <laughs> and I would just be speculating at this point. But you don't have a concern that that they're going to do over. Right. There's nothing else coming in for invoices, huge invoices for all of their capital expenses have been paid. So we're going to have payroll, utilities, um, probably diesel. Uh, any maintenance that comes up, I can't foresee that. Right. Are we done paying for repairs to the turbo? The, the whatever that 550. Truck is. The 550. Uh, well, the turbo was all warranty, so I just got the bill today. It was $60. Oh, okay. So you clear there. The frame welding was, I got the bill, was like $700. Yeah, it's in the orders. Yeah. So, so that's we're... not a huge expense to us. Okay. Uh, I am putting sand pile up, um, and I've trucked some stone to mix with the sand pile, so we'll have that. But still not, okay. not the hundred. And we'll still we'll still buy some gravel to do work on the roads that we're doing right now. So, but I just want to make sure there'll be excess money in the budget mm -hmm. at the end of the year. Okay. All right. So, anybody have any questions on the York break and approving said purchase? Is the current one just going to go to the junkyard? I mean, is it garage? Uh, no, I think we can still use it, but the idea is that we could we could modify it so that we could pull it with the pickup oh. also. So the older one will modify to use with the pickup, so it'll be the second one. There are a lot of times that, like, this whole month, our one ton has been down. Mm -hmm. So we had to use the six-wheel, which is less than convenient. If we'd have had it switched over, we could have pulled it with a pickup, mm -hmm. you know, and it would have been much much easier to do. So, yeah. right. so, so it'll be, it's a, so it'll be a spare and it retrofitted. will also be retrofitted so a smaller truck can pull it. So we're keeping it to we're, use? Yeah, we're keeping it. Yeah, okay. We're just retrofitting it to a secondary. That makes unit. sense. So it will. All right. So I would make a motion that we authorize the purchase of the York rate at, what did you say, 13000 Around that's give or take. Yeah, not approximately much. thirteen thousand. Then I'll modify my motion. Second with the modification. Right. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, oh, I know. I had a question. You know the guardrails on um, Jack the Hill. Jack Hill Moscow Woods. They were supposed to. They didn't have enough or something. They were supposed to come back and replace it. At Actually, their we were supposed to do that. I gotta go. I gotta go pick the, the rails up, and okay. we're gonna install them ourselves. Oh, you are okay. You know, you have a plan. If if I wasn't prepping for a party at the end of this week, I could do it this week. <laughs> are you opposed to the party? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay then. <laughs> Um, but no, I've just been really busy. Oh, I know. We'll have, we'll have a volunteer guardrail party. We can all go there. There you go. We'll do a site visit. If you want to eat, you got to help put in the guardrail, right? No, there's five pieces of rail that needs to be changed okay. out. And it's, it's the curved rail, and they didn't, they didn't have it when they came in. Right, yeah, I remember that. So I just wanted to, because I just noticed it the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, that was supposed to get fixed. Okay. To wait long enough, you'll turn rusty. I was going to say, it'll turn rusty anyway, right? That's true. All right, anything else on highway? You guys good? Good. Bugs? No, they just, need them they just fly right in your eyes. I don't know how you guys can stand it out there. That's not comfortable. It's bad. No, it's right on my nose. I don't think I've got it. All right, anything else highway? Toby, you're good? Nope, that's it. Okay. 
All right. Alfred, you all set on highlight? Yes. Should, Thank you. Alfred, do you want to just take a quick look at Greg's little map here? Sure. This is the two This is this is Pekinbrook Road, Jack Hill. He and Rick Barstow are doing a driveway over here, but this bridge he can't cross with his triaxle. So he wants to put three loads of three quarter inch black ledge on Friday and then they're gonna work on that Saturday. Sure. Yeah, so, as long as you And he said if there's anything left you could just yes. Yeah. You know, just go and like that. Put it on like the road. I said, if he's leaving it overnight, just put some combs. Yeah, put some combs. So somebody don't want him to. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. 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 All right. Thanks. Now, for, this is Frozen Toby's desk. All right. Um, Cliff. I T R F P. Yeah. You want this, Toby? Yep. That's fine. So here is the timeline that was published in the RFP. Um, vendors who responded are under the impression that uh, we're going to uh, probably, our goal was by the end of the month to award someone. Um, so given that I was out of commission there for a little while, we didn't get to meet. Um, have a chance to go over the pluses and minuses of each of the uh, responses as we had planned so we wanted to put this on the agenda uh, for tonight so that we could let everybody have an opportunity to weigh in to see if we could schedule something if we would prefer to push out we have the option to do that uh, the award any actually any part of it because of the way the RFP is written we have the um, ability to change the timeline I have had at least two vendors contact me and just say, hey, how's it going? And I said, okay, well, we're, um, we got set back a little bit, but uh, we'll be talking about it tonight. I would like to be able to reach out to all of the vendors who responded. I'd like to be able to reach out to them this week and just say, we're on track or we're changing our schedule. Well, I thought we did let them know that. that. No, no we, so we talked about. We talked about, I talked to Cliff and he said that the uh, RFP, the, there was like 180 days, and we wanted to wait until we had this meeting tonight. Okay, so they have not heard from any, anything? Not? No, no formal, than other than, you know, like I say, a couple of informal emails, just asking how it's going. We um, decided to wait until we get but the But the, the RFP, per the terms and conditions, any proposal submitted, um, unless they made a change to it prior to the close of the RFP, um, whatever they proposed would carry a validity period of 180 days. So do, are we, do we still we still want to do this um, rating system thing, right? Exactly, and yeah. um, I am. I was hoping to have it done, but uh, due to other requirements at my work, I just kind of got major burnt out on computers, especially working in uh, <laughs> limited capacity. But this is kind of what it's going to look like. Yeah. And it'll be simple. Um, you don't have to be really technically proficient. You're just looking at them and saying, yeah, they did a pretty good job of responding to that question, mm -hmm. or no, I didn't like how this one did it. It'll be a simple rating system. Um, and then my, my presentation will cover in a little detail some of the more technical aspects and considerations, okay, right. as well as where I see you know, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats from each of the proposals that we have received. Mm -hmm. So the only date line that we're off is this June 10th, which is today, mm -hmm. which was to select vendors, have select vendors to make a presentation. So we just now need to see, do we need to have a special meeting? Do you want to do it at a regular meeting? As you can see, our agendas get really full. Mm -hmm. um, that's why we had previously decided right. we would do a separate meeting. That was originally scheduled for June 3rd. So uh, do you cancel that one. want to try to do a special meeting in between tonight and the next select board meeting? Sort of what's people's schedules like? What do you want to do? What about you? Um, you all were wonderful recovering for me, so I will make myself available. Well, of course. Whatever the board decides. And why do I think there's, what is, what's on the seventh? There's the calendar. Oh, you know what? There's the CES school board meeting about the um, 
use agreement and easement. easement and all that that I really would like to go to. That's what That's on the 17th of June, which is the next Monday. And I'm trying to think what what's on the 18th. Is the school board not on that calendar? I'm looking at this calendar. Oh, I'm looking. And they're no, they're not on. They're not on our calendar. They're not. I don't think so. I've never seen them on there. Um, Planning Commission has this office on the 18th. I wonder if we could meet. How noisy do you think we would be if we're just the four or five of us discussing? We want the screen. The hmm? we, we want, want the screen. We want the screen. I have a meeting on the 18th. And I have a meeting on the 19th and another one on the 26th, the last two Wednesdays of every month. Could we, do we think we could cover this in an hour and do a special meeting on the 24th in advance of our regular meeting? We could try that. How are people's schedules for 6 o'clock on the 24th? I could do it. Okay. I could do that. Okay. All right, let's do that. Good idea. 6 o'clock on the 24th to do the rating system review. Review. And then we can let. I'll send out this you, um, scorecard to everybody this week so that you can start. Can you just doodling. scroll down so we can kind of get a sense of the whole thing? No, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let show. me go back. Yep. Um, here it is. Yeah, yeah. So, looking at the three, company, yep. uh, looking at their proposal, how well do they seemingly understand what we're looking for? Mm -hmm. Right how complete did they respond to our requirements yeah. uh, do we get a sense of their ability to fulfill those requirements yeah do we think their what they're offering is viable realistic yeah um and are well, they like know, aligning with terms right. and conditions and, this, yeah. and the office staff is gonna, gonna yes. do the same thing right yes. they're gonna do the rating I've, I've looked through them and made some notes but i can go through this more systematic approach right um yeah i'm not sure i can do the 24th, the election is the next day. We'll be working for right, but at least you guys can do the mm -hmm. the scorecard. We could do the scorecard and, right. and kind of give you our could. Sense. Well, could Santa do it? Because it would actually be really nice to have one of you guys will be talking about it, but have one of them here to actually talk with us. So we're really hearing all the voices. I don't know, Sandra. Are you available? I have at six. I think on the I'll be here on the 24th for the delinquent tax report. Let me just. On the 24th, right. Isn't that what you're talking about? Right, yeah, the having the delinquent tax thing on the 24th, so are you available at 6? I think so, hang on. Oh. That would be, it would be really nice to have you yeah. here. As an alternative, well, let's see if she's available. I think the 24th makes the most sense because people have Mondays blocked off anyways. No, how about yeah. alternative? Uh -huh. Okay, if, if you can be there, great. If not, what I was going to suggest is um, I could do the presentation of the SWOT analysis and how it you and I in a meeting with, oh, with the staff the staff on a Thursday. Yeah. Well Sandra's gonna be here that night yeah. anyways so to do the delinquent tax report. I don't yeah. think we can the do I would I would really like to have this feels so important for you, for you guys and we have to make the decision so it feels like you know bring you right to the table and yeah, yeah, they've been involved. There's right some the chairs over so. here that you're welcome to sit. Oh, somebody over there? Thank you. Yeah, the people from Woodbury. Oh, I didn't even see them come oh, in. Yeah, they just snuck in. Yep. Yep. Sorry, we're running late, guys. <laughs> what, a, what a surprise. All right, so would you, I think we maybe need to let the vendors that applied, um, if you I could contact them now that the we have a new schedule. Say, yeah, we had to revise our schedule, but we imagine. So we might have them come in if we have a select couple we want to I talk to. I guess that would be the next question then. It would be the July meeting. We probably want to push out the award date if we're not going to be able to go over this as a board until the 24th. <laughs> At that meeting, we may decide we really like these guys, but we want to hear from them directly. Right. We might have a couple we want to call in. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to push out the award date. Right. And the, next, the first meeting in July is the 8th. So if we, so we could do that, then... And given our July. select board agendas lately, it might be wise to think about doing that on the 8th at 6 o'clock. We're going to have special vendors come in to talk about 
their pitch. Yeah, I would say we need to see how many vendors we'd want to talk to. Right. And but also this, it's depending upon their availability. Right, right. Well, you know, they probably will make themselves available. If, uh, I would hope so. Uh, you know, all things if considered, they if they possibly can. I know there's some that would... <coughs> they would be there no matter what. And right. There's others that might have conflicts. Right. So we'll take that into consideration, but if we can let them know this new schedule. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you'll take care of that? Yep. Is it worth talking about an hour for even for two to present that feels really tight? Yeah. That's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, we could do 6 to 7.30 or something. I, think I just don't want to. Yeah. I think we just set aside the 8th as a potential date yep. to talk to Mm -hmm. These people, because yeah, I get that. I just want to make sure that there's something urgent that comes up or something critical. We have some okay. time on the select board agenda to address other issues. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I agree with that, Denise. But also, we cannot plan to have an agenda like this. You know, on the that, eight. not the eight. Not so, the eight. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. That's all I'm saying. No, but I'm just saying there might be things that absolutely right. have to get done. Right. So I don't because that's the first meeting of the new fiscal year so just keep that in mind so should we say six o'clock on the eighth well let's say I, tentatively the right mark. what i'll say to the vendors is that we will um, have another round of review of the responses on the 24th mm -hmm. at that point we may well identify um, vendors that we want to have come make presentations mm -hmm. and if we decide to do that we will advise them of the schedule after that yeah okay all right that makes sense because we may we may say hey there's three people we want to talk right to and then that's going to make the right, right if you let the line right away right. they'll have this opportunity to try right. to okay that sounds people. great thank you very much i know you've been in significant pain so i appreciate your working on it all right are we done with it anything else um i don't have anything else anybody there. else have any other questions about it stuff Audience? Sandra, you're up. Madam Treasurer, good to see you in person. And you as well. Sorry, this is got bogged down, but that's the way it works. Oh, that's fine. So we um, are reviewing the financial position of the of the town as of May 31st, 2019. Um, here's her, whoops. That is, um, Thank you. oh, that's the numeric audit, that's fine. And then the report that I'm gonna talk about is right behind that. So, and um, we can talk to Katie. So we'll talk first about the general government. We have collected a little over 95% of our, whoops, sorry. We have collected a little over 95% of our budgeted revenues. Um, with regard to our, and most of um, the 5% or so that we haven't collected are mostly del uh, delinquent tax, delinquent taxes, which we'll talk about more at our meeting on the 24th. Um, <coughs> we have expensed <coughs> about 84% of our budgeted expenditures as of May 31st. As of May 31st. So uh, budgeted expenses are, are on target. I mean, we are at the 91, we're at the 11th month of our fiscal year, and we would, should be at about 91% of our budget. So we're at 84% of our budget. Which is a surprise, right? Mm -hmm. Because we had all that highway we've been hearing over. Well, we're talking about general government because oh, okay. general government is okay. completely segregated so from highway. From highway. Oh, right. yep. Never mind. But so, we're concerned that we might come up short. Well, the analysis piece of this is while we are probably not going to exceed our budgeted expenditures, our revenues are less than what is budgeted. 
and the projection I have at this point is that for, for the general government side, we're probably going to hit a deficit between twenty and thirty thousand dollars. So we have um, in our general government fund a little bit more than a hundred thousand dollars to cover the expenses through June thirtieth. However, we have two large. Um, payments uh, in excess of $100,000 plus interest that are due June 30th, mm -hmm. plus payrolls, um, utilities, all of and the everyday every, stuff. All the everyday stuff, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the projection. Mm -hmm. Is that dire? No. Uh, we will probably, we're going to end the year, I would say, in good shape. We began this fiscal year with an excess of $300,000 in our general fund. I don't think we will have, or end FY19 uh, in, uh, in as good a shape as we came into it, but we won't be much below it, mm -hmm. is, what I, is what I think at this point in time. Um, so we should have enough money to float our expenses and grant expenses, our budgeted FY20 expenses and our grant expended expenses until the um, tax effort begins. The tricky thing with the tax effort is that it is delayed about a month this year because of the merger. So. Typically, we begin, uh, our tax bills are due early in September, but tax money begins to come in, say, in August. This year, bills will not, are not likely to go out until the end or the beginning of October, and it is unlikely that we're going to see tax payments come in because simply if the, the bills are just, the, the tax payments are going to be unknown but until... The vote, the vote on those budgets, though, isn't until June 25th, correct? So the upcoming election is to vote on that budget. And just as with all budgets, there's a 30-day period of time where a petition can be raised to look at the budget again. So the best case scenario is on July 25th, we, we, we're not going to revote that budget. The budget will go to the state for development of the district-wide tax rate. Mm -hmm. That takes about a month, I'm told, Lori Bebo from the, uh, the business um, director at the district level said it takes them about a month. So that brings us to August 25th. It takes us about five, or it takes me about five, six days to process tax bills there are are we going to have a tax bill stuffing party again yes of course yeah. so we send out a, in excess of a thousand tax bills that uh, includes the duplicates the uh, the that go to various owners and to escrow and to escrow companies um, so it will take us about five or six days to process that bill so that mm -hmm. brings us to um, September 25th? September 25th. Wait, no. no June, June 25th July. to July 25th. July 25th to August 25th. The bills will go out early in September. Yeah, the beginning of September. And by statute, we cannot require payment less than 30 days after the mailing date. Right. So we're really looking at the end of September, the beginning of October. For the first payment. For the first payment. Oh. The second payment won't be mm -hmm. due until November 15th. Now, the good news is... That's, that's a, kind of the normal date. It's like two that weeks is, apart? There will be about six weeks apart. So the November good, 15th date is a... That's, that's your standard that's, date. That's our standard date. Your last date. So the good news is that it it appears as of this moment, unless we have to revote that budget, that we will not require a town meeting to change the way we collect our taxes. We can still do two equal payments. We can still require payment of the first payment not less than 30 days after the bill date and the second installment on November 15th. If there is a delay, if the budget is revoted, we may want to rethink. I'm just planting the seed, a strategy for getting tax money in sooner, or we fall back to a tax, uh, a note in anticipation right. and I know of taxes. That 
we the way we worked <coughs> our warning in the town report for the collection, some towns put in their warnings the dates already that they were going to have to collect taxes by. Ours is open to this 30 day, so lucky for us, we are ahead in that game. Mm -hmm. We don't have to have a special town meeting to change the date of the taxes unless we get into some other kind of loop, but there's a few towns that have to have a special town meeting to rewarn those articles because they put in specific collection dates for taxes and now they're not going to, they can't meet those dates. I don't like how the dates are too close. You can't do anything about it, but no. I just thought I would say that. <laughs> well, we're I, glad I, to have your opinion, Madam Chappelle Chuck. I, yes. I think that, that will, um, we are expecting a, a lot of phone calls and yeah, um, people aren't going to be happy about that and complain and mm -hmm. complaining. Mm -hmm. you know, we we are anticipating that. However, it the taxes are they still have to pay their taxes whether okay. it's two and a half months apart or one and a half months apart. The obligation of ownership requires the payment well, of Well, and some of this is not even within our control. We don't have and any this really control. Isn't. This is out of our control, really. Well, maybe just as a public service, maybe we should put something on front porch form that yeah. says well, let's wait there's so until, many different changes that are happening. Let's usually, wait until after the vote on the 25th. Yeah, the 25th, yeah. And just say, just usually, sure. you know, we pay taxes in August and November. Be advised this year. It, With an explanation as to yeah. why, so that right. we get that ahead of the game. I, like, yeah. I think that's a really good and idea. And the reminder that it doesn't change the amount of taxes you pay. Well, no, the timing, the timing doesn't change. Right. The timing doesn't change the amount. Well, right. And, and because we approved the November 15th deadline at town meeting day, um, that is not subject to change. Because some people I could envision saying, well, the one, the first one was late, so why couldn't we pay the second one like after Christmas or something? But, you know, so we just need to. Well, folks are going to have all kinds of yeah, right. um, I mean, this is, ideas this is about how, how this is a great departure to them. But right. really, it's a payment that needs to be made. Right. It's going to be, and, and it, it's going to be higher than last year because that's the way the tax rates are going. Yeah. And they're going to have to pay it in a, uh, closer work and find period yeah, closer of time. proximity. Yeah. Uh, I do plan on going out on front porch forum, but I do. I want to see how the vote vote goes yes, on wait on June twenty fifth. Sure. If it passes, um, there would be one message, and if it fails, I think there would be another message. And at that point, probably the select board really would want to take a look at what. It, what we might want to do in response mm -hmm. if that budget fails. And we're still going to be kind of in a holding pattern to see if the budget will hold after 30 days. So right. just a heads up, um, highway capital expenses are really stacked up in August and September. So mm -hmm. a lot of their capital equipment payments are in that section of time. Mm -hmm. yep of course, anticipating tax money coming in. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to see how it plays out. Again, we're going to go in. We're not going in with a deficit. We're going in with a fund balance that's going to carry us to a certain period of time. How far, how long is we're, we're going to have to wait and, and see. And i got to say, there's a lot of towns that are in this same pickle. Oh yes, you know we're not we're not alone in There's this. There's four other towns. Well, in this in this particular pickle barrel, yeah. Um, but like I said, at least we don't have to do a special town meeting in between all of this stuff to change the dates of one of the. Well, not yet. Yeah, that that not yet. That is right. not that we don't. That's not on the horizon. That's not right. and I think a requirement could, yet. We might also think about putting in when the first tax bill comes out. When the textbook comes out, putting in some kind of a bright neon orange insert, letting people know about the difference in the dates and, and why. The tax bill, or, uh, just as an aside, and, and I know it's late and I just want to move on, but the tax bills will look significantly different mm -hmm. this I, year. I they are going line. to, rather than the breakdown stacking on top of one another, town, local, school, with it town, local school with the uh, total due, the state 
payment if there is one reduced and then the net due which kind of is neat and tidy in, in my mind it's going to have the municipal side over here with a tax due the state with a line down the middle this the, the uh, education portion of the tax bill on the right mm -hmm. with the amount due and then in a little box also on the right there it, they'll add up those two gross numbers add up the two state payments oftentimes this the state property tax adjustment credit is split between um, local and school taxes add that up and then there is a little box where your net tax is due and then your little um and then your two page two little stairs. your stubs it's really i looked at that thing online that they sent out it was like oh my it's it's really an unattractive bill it's it's not intuitive if for your less sophisticated um taxpayers i think it's going to be a struggle i want to work with our printer and at see if we I'll probably have the bills printed in black and white with a highlight with a strip of highlight in that box of the net tax due Ooh. is mm -hmm. my vision um, to make it try to make it easier to really try and jump it out so yeah. there's a lot of moving pieces this yeah. year what does it translate to, into uh, you know more delinquent taxes a heavier than I normal delinquent tax and we'll be really busy answering questions so okay. so, so well you know we're going to get through it it's yeah. a, it's a one off and uh, next year will probably be a more normal tax collection season wow. highway we talked about that earlier and I'm, I'm not going to beat that stick they have hundred and nine thousand four hundred and eight dollars going into the bottom and going into this last month they're in great shape they should not go go uh, over go over that mm -hmm. in their case they are uh, over their uh, budget in terms of budgeted expenditures <clears throat> by two percent which is interesting because they're that the entire um, winter season is showing up now. Now we're seeing how that budget was it was cantilevered over. Yeah, so, I was concerned um, because of all the storms and the overtime, and I was like, whoa. So their expenditures are over. So they're in the reverse situation of general government. Their expenditures are over and will continue to go over, of course, but their revenues are so, their projected revenues were mm -hmm. so much under what actually came in um, be, because of grant reimbursements from right. prior years that they are they are coming in Thankfully, to right. the end of the year in the black big time and they will likely have a surplus what um, about cemetery 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 budget oh I don't really keep a track of the cemetery budget okay. and it's not on here they keep track of their own budget Okay. So we're not going to have any surprises that we know of. Uh, they, at this point in time, they're not over budget, but yet I have no I, I have no idea what's coming in from them ever. Okay. Okay. You just never know what's going <clears> to <throat> yep. come over the email. But they're looking good. Okay, anything else? Uh, oh, the balance sheet. We want to do that. Mm -hmm. That should be right. So everybody save this report for next mm -hmm. meeting with the delinquent tax stuff on it. Okay. So and the then. balance sheet has us. This is a, a recap. We have uh, over nine hundred thousand dollars in assets, most of which is in the checking account. Roughly four hundred and eighty thousand dollars is committed to other funds, and we talked about those other funds. And there's a list behind. Um, your balance sheet that shows what those other funds are. Yep. The town hall renovation project has $27,000 going into this last month and I believe they were planning to come in and ask the board to allow for the use of town hall fund, the town hall fund reserve to uh, fund whatever balance of that project we is less. Th we approved ten thousand dollars last meeting. Okay. Bless, Bless, me. Thank Bless you. Um, Thank you. 
our current liabilities uh, of twelve thousand dollars is roughly all due to the overpayment of 2018 taxes, which will be credited on the 2019 tax bills, and prepaid, pardon me, bless you, and prepaid 2019 taxes. Um, our current year fund balance, as I said before, is in excess of $100,000, a titch in excess of $100,000. If if this were the end of the year, if May 31st were, was the end of our fiscal year, mm -hmm. we would be uh, rolling into fiscal year 20 with $418,000 to the good. Now that won't happen. It's going no. to be probably June 30th, June 30th maybe $120,000. $130,000 less than that. But nevertheless, we still I have think a that fund balance. we look, we're definitely still going to have yeah. a fund balance. Good. Yes. Great. Uh, we will have out of that, uh, you know, there will be rollovers. The highway mm -hmm. surplus will roll over, cemetery surplus, and they are, they do, they do are looking like they're having a surplus. Good. They are not in a deficit. Good. Yeah, we'll and, we just, yeah and, they, and now they have the ability to roll that over into a reserve fund. So that's good. Um, not to belabor the delinquent tax report, we have 66, almost $67,000 in delinquent taxes still outstanding. Right, if we had that, we wouldn't. And so if that came in, even half of that, between we now and the 30, deficit. we may not have any deficit whatsoever. Yep. So you do have uh, the existing delinquent tax list behind mm -hmm. that report. And uh, next month, I'll come in and Hopefully that will be down by half, but um, and at some point you'll come in with all of the ones that are like eighty nine cents and fifty three cents. Or, yeah, and we'll just you know do a whole slate all at once, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I I will say that I did send the certified letters out, and for the most part, the taxpayers did not pick them up. I didn't figure they would. So that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that was an expensive proposition, and honestly, I wouldn't recommend that again. I they just, don't pick them up. They don't pick no. them up. We've What's, done we've done certified letters before. Nadine has done them, and same thing. It was quite expensive. It was over seventy dollars. So I think that I I know that addresses are good because first class mail does not get returned. They're just mm -hmm. simply not picking them up. Yeah. I think that you don't clear, have to pick them up. No, you do not. So the message is, yeah, I know I haven't paid, mm -hmm. and I don't want to know what you're going to tell me next, I think. So um, definitely I want them to get their first class letter that's going to go out in the next two or three days to the various classes of folks and say, um, to those of you who haven't called or paid, that payment has to be in by June 30th, uh, or we're going to be turning the parcel over to the tax attorney for tax sale. Yeah, okay, we'll talk about that more. Right. right before, so so that's, we'll have a better idea. Maybe mm -hmm. some of these magically will get paid. And what, let's think that maybe they will. Yeah, positive thinking. So our next step will be what to talk about our next step in the next meeting. Right. Sullivan and Powers, they're all good to go. Everybody's, I'm, I've pretty much read this. I'm sure everybody else has as well. Um, it's their standard engagement letter. Sandra checked it against the letter from the last time and it's just, you know, it's basically the same. The amount the same, 14,000? 14,9, I think it said on the last page. 900 or 700? 14,9, I think is what they, yeah, 14,9. And that's what we budgeted for. They will be doing the audit on FY19 on uh, July 18th and July 19th. That's a Thursday and a Friday. Okay. So we should be well prepared for that, and um, that's how that's going to go. And hopefully, because it's so early in the year, you will have that information by the end of September, and you know before you begin your budget, you'll be Which informed really by nice that before have. you begin your budgeting process. Yes, that'd be really nice to have that. Yeah. Um, and you, you said they were fine to work with last year. They came and did a presentation. He was very helpful. Um, we've great. got we've got 
um, Cynthia on board now doing the monthly audit reconciliation. So that shit was one of the things that they mentioned in their management letter. So we should be good in that sense now. Well, what, uh, yes, and she's uh, audited May and, excuse me, she's audited April and she's audited May. She did that today. And uh, significant on that? that no. In April, there were a lot of tweaks that had to be made to the right. system. There were some. Well, that was your first month. Mm -hmm. So all of that has been done in May. Really, they're just, uh, she did all the reconciliations and she had no notes. Um, I didn't have anything to follow up with. And we spent time, um, there, there was a couple, of, there, a couple of data points that needed to be uh, corrected. I transposed a couple of numbers, so we, made, we ran that down. We confirmed that that was a transposition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then we talked about how we're gonna close out the year and get the um, software in good shape for the audit. So you're so this is working out okay for you with Cynthia. Doing yes, it's this. very useful. Okay, very good. Did you send this one to us electronically? I didn't see it. No, she didn't. Uh, did I did I send? I think I did. Does that look familiar? I didn't look at it to ask, but I, 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 I dumped the letter. I did. Came in. I think it's right in the, the end folder. Of the day. Yeah, it was the there. last one when I said, "Oh, one more, one more thing." Oh, maybe yeah. Katie just has not Oh, I wonder if the internet wasn't. You know, our internet went down. Did yeah. your internet go down? Well, our internet's been going down on and off. A lot. Yeah. They had it on the news one night mm -hmm. that 80,000 customers, it's like, hello, yeah. I'm trying to get stuff done. This is when I was working on the agenda, trying mm -hmm. to get it out, but the internet went down. It, it went down um, sometime after 4 o'clock today. Well, maybe if and so maybe it didn't it, get to your it, it, it is in mine. It's in your in, queue, because you... It's, it says it's there in some May 19th number. It went in right before six. Oh, uh, there it is, that guy. Okay, perfect. I thought then so. we're good, and it's yeah. in public too, so okay. we're good. Yes. Yep. Okay, good. Well, thank you, madam. All right, any Anything questions? on Sullivan and Powers? Um, we need a motion right. to um, approve the engagement letter for Sullivan and Powers for the FY. Um, what do I call it? The FY19 audits. So second. second. All right, is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I'll pass this around for folks to sign. This audit will be very, if we need a tax anticipation note, uh, although you haven't had audits in the past and you certainly have been able to get your tax anticipation notes, but this just really will make that easy, easy. Okay. It ju it's just really they ask for yeah, they ask for the audits. Oh yes, yeah, we've they ask for the audits. You just send them the PDF, and that's pretty much. There's two sets there to sign. Oh, okay. okay. Anything else, Madam Treasurer? There, no. Okay. Not at the moment. No, we're Thank you. We'll let you go home now. It's ten of nine. Thank Sorry you. Sorry for the delay. That's all fine. I didn't know. Some of the discussions just going to take so long. I should know better. Someday I'll learn. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. Thank you. So do you anyway. want, should I just leave these? Yeah, I'll take them and I will, we'll get them off in the end of ours mail. Um, well, we're waiting for Sharon to hand those over to Sandra. Um, Rose, thank you for coming with me to the last DRB hearing. Oh, it was it was very my pleasure. Yes, we yes. Okay, so now you know what I've been going through, right? You didn't miss anything. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry you couldn't make it. More happy. Anyways, the it. hearing is closed. As of the as of um, May 30th, the hearing is closed. They have 45 days in which to issue their decision. I'm sorry, Judy, did you have anything? Um, just that the election is the 25th. There's two ballots. You can see them, oh, unless it's fallen. Um, posted out there and at Maple Corner and East Callis and on the web. And you'll let us know what you need help with? Yep. You may need some JP help. Um, but, uh, Elections so. here? Yeah, it, well, yeah, it's the vote, and it's going to be with the tabulator and, and um, 
7 to 7 on the 25th. Again. Okay. Another vote. Another vote. The budget is on one uh, ballot, and the amendment to the Articles of Agreement, even though most people probably don't know the original article. Yeah, I was going to say, most people don't even know what they're voting on. So it's, there'll be lots of questions, <laughs> but I'm going to veer them toward the school. Yes, you should. They're the ones with the Thank you. Uh -huh. thank All right, you. thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Um, that brings me to the 17th, which is that meeting at the Cal's Elementary School starts at 6, where they're going to vote on those documents. Remember, Jim drafted those right, documents, right. they gave them to the school. The school hired a separate attorney rather than one that already works with the school district that was, anyways, we'll go into that. But Brian Monahan reviewed the documents. He's talked to Jim. I'm waiting. i got to catch up with Dot. Um, I'm going to ask her to send me the documents that they're going to be looking at. Does anybody else want me to email them to them when I get them from Dot? Do we have to go to this meeting? No, you don't. Yeah, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. I'm going because yeah. right. I've been to the other ones about this. Right. So. Um, I know of no updates on Central Mount Regional Planning Commission stuff, um, other than that there's a meeting Thursday night that Jan has to go to, so some kind of a special kind of a meeting, so she's going and she can't come to the other thing on Thursday night. Um, Woodbury Fire Department. Anybody here from Woodbury Fire Department? Yes. Oh, oh troopers. <laughs> troopers. Sorry, I'm so sorry. It is what it is. I hate to make people wait when you know you got to get up in the morning and all that stuff, but I apologize. Thank you. So you're here because we have a new contract here coming up. Yes, ma'am. And the new contract includes the amount that was voted on at town meeting, the, was it 31? Good night, Sandra. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I'll be catching up with you guys Thank you. before Thursday. Would you guys remind me both your names? My name is Chance. P-A-Y-E-T-T. -T. And this is Camille. Thanks. So, here we are. I know I have my, oh, here it is. There it is. So the, really the only thing in the contract that changed is the increased amount based on the budget vote at town meeting, correct? Correct. Everything else is the same, at least it looked like it was. Yes, ma'am. Um, Try to keep it simple. <laughs> right, yeah, let's do that. July 1st through June 30th of 2020. That's why we're doing this now. Um, Anything else significant? It doesn't, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward standard contract. So we'll sign off on this, and then you'll sign it and send us back a signed copy for our file, correct? Uh, well, I was going to say, I took the liberty of having Paul sign last night because he was going to be out of town. So if you guys want to sign, I can sign and you can take a copy while we're here. Oh, okay, we can do that. Keep it even simpler. And when <laughs> is this, um, when's the first payment due? We bill it out for July 1st. So we won't have to pay until we get into the new fiscal year. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, anybody have any questions on the Woodbury Fire Department contract or Woodbury Fire Department at all? So the um, the truck replacement fund, the thirty-one thousand dollars, even though it's in the contract, like, so what's going to happen next year at town meeting? Will we have that same amount or? whatever we vote on next March, we'll see in this contract next June for the following year, or is it always going to be that amount? It's going to be that, that amount. It's going to be 000. that amount. Yep. I think that's, that's what we voted on at town. Yep. Meeting. It's going to be the 31,000. <laughs> 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 yeah. Our memories are foggy. Well, there's yeah, a lot of memories between now and then. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the $31,000 was breaking out the cost over the life of the 20-year plan because of the different trucks and the uh, Self-contained breathing apparatus. Right, right. right. SCBI, yeah, yeah, all the costs were built into that. We plan. know some of that. I know, Academic right? Stuff, right? And I was, I was drawing a blank myself. <laughs> SCBA. I don't know. Days. I try not to talk in the alphabet soup, you know, between <laughs> my day-to-day -day job and then the fire department. I end right. up talking in code, but yeah. So that's the thirty-one thousand. The one thing that was going to change is in five years when we finish paying off the two trucks that we had loans on. That will get rid of the seventeen eight fifty. Right. So. Yes. 
that'll be the only change. So that's two more, two more years of the 17,850? This year and then one more time? No. Five more. Five, five years. Oh, five, five I'm years. sorry. Five years is the life of the loans on those, right. and those will be done. Okay. Yeah, so the payments are due quarterly. All right. Yeah. Anybody like to make a motion to approve the new contract for FY? Uh, you know, it's beginning of FY twenty. So move. In the amount of as presented by Chance Payout. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, Any further discussion? Okay. Good. Where? On page two, the header. Oh, right there, seventeen eighteen. Oh, you're right. Can you just do that, Mark, on yours? Yeah. We can sign it, and I can get copies for us and for you. You're right. Glad Good catch. you know the year. Good catch. It's so easy when it's all boilerplate, right? Yeah. Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Give them Second. Four. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. We're going to pass it around. I assume we're gonna meet at some point. Yeah, we uh, we actually have another meeting uh, this Thursday with the architects, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not sure if this is gonna be the last one for the fire department or if there will be one more after mm -hmm. that. But as soon as uh, that's determined, we'll give everybody a month notice so we can. I was gonna say my we month, have to warn it. Rest of June is already yeah. checker block full. We have to warn the meetings now because we have Paul, who's a select board member. Is our chief right, and, Michael. and we invited oh. a select board member from each oh, town, so we just two of them come. Select board now. Yeah, he just got elected. Oh, yeah. good. He's he's enjoying more that. More to do. <laughs> I know. I was gonna say like Paul needs more to do, but I gotta say you guys are really great to work with. I really appreciate well, thank you. The, yeah. the attitudes and and uh, you know flexibility. Well, flexibility. I, th I think it goes a lot being both ways. Front, you know. <clears throat> right. So I really just I just want you I know I've told you that before but um just wanted to interact you know where you guys are with us. We really appreciate it. Can you copy sure. Oh no over yeah, here in the copy yeah, yeah. machine. Thank you. Yeah, and just for the FYI, uh, I didn't get a chance uh, back in March, but you know, I'd like to thank the board as well for you know their support at town meeting and the mm -hmm. townspeople definitely showed their support. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a shout out to the town folks here as well. And I want you to meet Nick. He's our assistant emergency management director. We're going to be approving our LEOP hopefully yep. tonight. And We're already up to it. Yeah, we met at uh, one of the trainings they had. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you, we put you guys and East Montpelier Fire Department in our plan. Oh, yes. So I'm assuming Nick's got all the numbers he needs or whatever. I was say, uh, I would like to steal Nick's number before I leave because I probably could update it with some numbers. But just to make sure you know LEOP is up to snuff. Oh, okay. With all the new numbers. Yeah, yeah. Pen, Nick? Okay. Um, okay. So you get a copy of that? Oh, uh, no, just write it right on the line. Well, my, my number? Yes. That's right. Has yours changed? Uh, it will yes. be. Okay. I just switched over to a first nap phone. Right. Stay tuned. <laughs> we don't know how it works really, but it's sitting in its case still because I don't have a protective case for it. So. Oh, okay. You got a new phone, but you didn't keep your old number? Uh, for first net, you have to change. Oh. Uh, when you sign up, it's, a, it's the new 14 band for first responders. Oh, so okay. I had to get a new number for that. So I'm oh. keeping my old number on my regular phone, mm -hmm. and then the first that phone has a new number. So good idea. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. And then it'll all be in our plan, so we'll have that information. Great. Exactly. You You're all set. Us? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks for waiting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. And we didn't even have any like cookies and milk to give away. away. I'm so sorry. Uh, Paul wasn't here. He's the cookie monster. Uh, <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. Thank you. That's why Nick's here with the patience of a saint. I know. You got here at like quarter of I seven or something. I am impressed by the hard work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Come join us. Yes. 
So what I'm hoping we can do um, is kind of go through this. I'm the one that's behind. Nick's been very diligent in bugging me. Um, although some of your emails I don't think I ever got because you said, I was like, oh, okay. really? I don't remember that. Um, anyways, this is what we need to do. We need to update this. I had some um, questions yeah. about some of the things which I asked Nick. And I'm hoping what we can do tonight is to go through this, um, check and see if anybody else has any questions, and then authorize Nick and I to finish working on it and sign it and submit it. Goes to the Regional Planning Commission. Yeah. 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 So if you scroll through, which I think. Oh, that's his back of oh, the water. Oh, okay. backing up. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth Casey. I asked Nick, I said, who is Elizabeth Casey? Oh, Elizabeth. Uh, oh, Casey. Okay. Bought the house across from Maple Corner. The one that a year Steve ago. Cusick used to live in. Yes. Okay. Cusick. Um, she does Airbnb out of her home. She works with the uh, Vermont Department of Environmental Conservation. She has a background in communications. And it just, I was sitting across, you know, having a meal with her, and I said, are you interested <coughs> in being a public information officer? Because it's kind of a glaring omission in our emergency operations. Yeah, we want to great. Have. And she said, sure, tell me more about it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I need to have more of a conversation with her, but she. But we need to appoint her too. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. so but it's a recommendation. That's why yeah. I'm going on there. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking she was. Tell her to come that... and meet us. We like to know new okay. people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll put her on the agenda for hopefully the twenty fourth to appoint her as our okay. public, public information relations officer. public information officer. If you can get me her contact info. I will do that. So. She, she seems like a real steady, you know, great. feet on the ground kind of person. Good. I mean, great yeah. work on your part. Grab them when you can. Wonderful. Okay, so Nick will fill in. Um, I think we should fill in some, unless it's someplace else. I don't know how we find out, like, Nick's contact info, her contact info. We should put it Yeah, it, it has to all go there. It's, it's on another page. On another document. page. Yeah. Okay. And do you want to have... Uh, if you could scroll up for a moment, if you want to have an, um, an alternate lo location for the Emer Emergency Operations Center, we have the Cal Elementary School. Do you also want to um, have um, the town garage as a backup? Well, that location. was one of the things I suggested is that maybe we should have the town garage as, yeah. um, I think that was one of my comments that you can't see. So, good. And because you and I garage, can do this stuff. We don't have to take meeting time on this. Right, because the town garage has you know, all the heavy equipment, they have the radios. Yeah. It just seemed to me maybe we should have a secondary That's great. Good plan yeah. if we needed it. Yeah. Um, and I just, so Denise, um, we don't have to take your meeting time given the hour right. to go through this. Well, I just wanted to see if the board members had any well, questions. Well, is that taking okay. long? All We're right. cruising. Um, okay. Well, Denise, there's your comments. It's just because I had this enlarged. Yeah, these are all the comments I sent to Nick. But I think I filled in all the information as much as I knew, Denise. Yeah. I'll put that in there. So you had the comment, too, about the town hall. Right, when the town hall is done, we plan to use that as an additional um, center, and I'm hoping that it would be for people with pets. And we're going to have Great. a generator eventually, Great. if we have money to buy one. Yeah. Um, you've added Woodbury. I'm thinking, I wonder if we should add chances to contact in there somewhere too, just in case we can't get a hold of Paul. Yes, and so this is the short form. There's also a long form, which there's a, a lot more information yep. that I've entered, and I think Chan, I'll double check. Yeah, I, I mean, this Chan is the one that I'm gonna have, like, okay. in my book, if I ever need it, which I have had to use it before, but not often. Yeah, I'll put chance on there, sure. Um, Anybody have any thoughts on Jim yeah. Reardon, electrical contractor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This that's yeah. just a almost nearly random list of other local resources. Local resources. He's a plumber. Yeah, he is a plumber. Electric. Who's an electrician? Cohen. Dan Cohen. Dan Cohen. Dan Cohen. Dan Cohen. Jim Reardon does. No, no, no. Dan, Dan Cowan. I don't know. I think he's, I think, I think so. Yeah. Brian Evans. Who? Brian Evans. 
Brian Evans, he's local. Mm -hmm. I'll find him. Okay, he's the electrician. He's electric. Mm -hmm. so it, might, it might not hurt to have a car listed. And the ATV Snowmobile Club, isn't that Steve Gray? Yeah. It is. Yeah, that's in one of my comments. Instead of Jason Fielder? Great. Steve, G-R-E-Y? Yeah. G-R-A-Y. Steve Gray on Max Gray Road. Great. Thank you. I mean, these are just some little general resources, which is handy to have in an emergency. Yeah. And then, do we, is there another place that we have health care people? What do you mean? Oh, the um, J. Cobb Bank, town yeah, health yeah, officer. But, but we do have him. Yeah. Yes, J. Cobb is our health officer. Yep. He's down. Uh, I have him down. Yeah, you have him on there. Yeah. With yeah. <coughs> Maria Resign. Right. Uh, and oh, that was the other thing. I don't know if we have a way to contact. What's those people on the hill in Maple Corner with? It's a great suggestion. Um, Malone. Pat Malone. If we could put him down, I think mean, there was an emergency. He has a helicopter. I know someone who could have that conversation with him. So we'll Just a follow up on that. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's, uh, and again, on the long form, we have um, many more local resources. Right. Listed, yeah. Which is also in the Google Drive folder. Yep. Okay, these this are the required by the feds. Yeah. Toby, mm -hmm. I did not do any work on that. Toby did all of that, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of his area. What was, uh, what was Denise's what comment? Was phone numbers. Good phone numbers. Oh, phone numbers. And I, I think it's on the step next. Oh, the next page? Coming yeah. down. And I put them in. There. Yeah, and they put them in. Um, we've got cat bears. That's the school number, her home number, and her cell number. Right. Because recently when we had a power outage, last this past winter, mm -hmm. and the power was out for at least for a couple of days, and I'm thinking, oh, we might have to open up the school as an emergency shelter because it's got the generator. Mm -hmm. um, and I was scouring around trying to find Kat's home phone number. Oh. That's what made me think of that. So this isn't, the town hall isn't ready yet, so I don't think, I think we can, uh, we can put it, I think we put it on there. Then. No, I think we can leave okay. it on there, but we don't have any information yet because it's not done. Okay. Yeah. One, one comment when I just saw the thing for Red Cross, I remember many, many years ago, there was something with the American Red Cross, and they had a form or something that the select board yes, had to fill that. out. And we, the town, I guess we didn't know we had to do that to name them as a regional person working with us. And so is there any way that you could just verify yes. that we're in good standing with the Red Cross well, and they know? Well, a contract. We should sign a contract with them that spells out. Yeah, so. There's no financial. Right, but. I'm just saying, yes. so it doesn't come, come across the select board. Okay, that'd be great, Nick. So we yeah. want to formalize our understanding. Yeah, right. formalize whatever It was when the Adamant Dam yeah. happened. Because yeah. the Red Cross brought in peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. yeah. That was on my list. But yeah, yeah there's, I, there, I, know, I remember that years ago there was something about yeah. we weren't formally associated with them. And it needs to be updated every year. Yeah. So and I'll, yeah. we'll follow up on that. Okay, here's all of the other phone numbers. Um, and animal control is on here somewhere. And Elizabeth Perry is the assistant. I added her name. You got her name? Okay, very good. And we just need a phone number. Cliff, what's the phone number to use? Oh, for, oh, I don't know Elizabeth Perry's phone number. 256308. Well, okay. This is like, this is helpful. Thanks. Thanks. Up. Um, and I can um, give you the email address as well if you'd like that. Sure. Yeah. Um, Callis A. Callis A C O. Okay. At gmail .com. And what's the phone number again? Two two five. Yeah. Six three zero eight.
Yes. Yeah. So. All right. So would the select board consider approving, authorizing Nick and I to finalize it and get it submitted? I move that we authorize Denise and Nick to work together to finish this document. Well, there's actually a form that needs to be signed. Right. right. I can um, do that if you want. Or, okay, let's finalize it first and then I'll, okay. then I'll sign it. Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Can I mention aye. One, one thing? There's many initiatives, but we have a bare bones uh, emergency management plan, and that's fine. But there are some really creative and useful ways we could build out the plan for CALS. Uh, and I, so I'll be talking to Denise about those, and I, I want to make sure. And I'm, you've gone to some trainings, which is great. Yeah, I've gone to some trainings. Yeah. Uh, but one of them I just, for example, I want to mention right away, this is. Um, it's GETS, which stands for Government Emergency Telecommunications Services. And what it does is it's, there's no cost, but you can, town can send in up to, you know, 10 names of town officials and people who, uh, when there's an emergency, a regional emergency, and telecommunications services get congested, mm -hmm. and everyone's trying to call grandma, and nobody can get through because um, you get bumped to the front the people who are let's get them to the front so you can get through. Mm -hmm. And I, I suggest that we do this. Oh, I think it's a great um, idea. Unless anyone sees any red flag. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't um, see there's any downside to that at all. Downside. So it, they needed a, a designated point of contact. It could, I, don't, I don't know if that matters who that is, but we need to designate someone. Okay. Well, we can figure people. that out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there are lots yeah. of cool stuff. There like is this a lot of cool stuff. That we Especially can technology. Do easily. Yeah. yeah. Te technology well, and you've gone to a couple trainings, and Nick's got the time to really jump yeah. into this, which is, I right. think is really great. So thank you very much for your yeah, help. Thanks okay. for doing that. Just keep bugging me. Okay. And a lot of it is finding people, recruiting people mm -hmm. to yeah. do little projects. Right. The one thought on the, on the contact, Denise, I would, you may not be thinking about yourself. But you're going to be inundated with people in town trying to talk to you. So somebody who is a little freer to. Well, my, yeah, that's a good thought. So when we talk about that, mm -hmm. um, that list, let's think about, you know. Who? But you said a, a designated single. Oh, they only need a, a point of contact to set this up. Oh, okay. Yeah, and right, then right. there's a dozen people on the list who get the oh. priority. No, I understand. Yeah, that I understood, but yeah. I thought that, okay, so that's never just mind. for setting yeah. it up, yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay. If you want me to do, be that person, probably. Okay. So they, we'll figure it out. Okay. So we don't all take right. up any more. Great. Okay. Thank you Thank very you. much. Sure. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Okay. I'm Thank usually. You. I'm usually. Thanks for sitting through I'll a really try. long meeting. Yes. Yeah. But was it was entertaining. Informative. It, it was mind-boggling uh, how much work you're doing. You have to be a little schizophrenic to do that. Okay. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So I'm usually I'm usually here on like every other Thursday or so. So maybe we can set up a Thursday sure. time. Um, that, not not this Thursday. I'm not. I'm gonna. I'm not doing town hall this Thursday. We have our dinner that you're yeah. coming to. Okay. Um, and that Jerome's coming too. Um, so I'm going to skip the town hall meeting because I'm going to be busy. Okay. All right. But we'll figure it out. Good. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Nick. Right. Mm -hmm. right. I just Thank have you. a I have a few updates um, from things that I've been working on. You know about the appreciation dinner. Mm -hmm. um, Tom McComb from Kellogg Hubbard Library is retiring. Mm -hmm. And he's got, there's two women there that are going to take his job and they've worked it out with the board of directors as co-directors. Mm -hmm. And Tom, I think I sent you his email, right? I forwarded his email and it's, it's in the Google folder um, where he thanks us and he, he made a huge difference in the communication with the library from previous directors mm -hmm. to when he took over was just mm -hmm. so wonderful. He made a huge difference in the in a good communication mm -hmm. effort. Um, town office roof repairs, that's still going. I still I give Andy a little prod every little while because we want to get it done. He's concerned that there's rot underneath the roof and he doesn't want to have somebody get in here to replace the roof 
and then it's rotted. He's got one estimate so far. He's waiting for a couple more. The email that yeah, he said someone from Groton was going to look at it. Or something. Yeah, the last email I had with him, I had Katie yeah. put it in the mm -hmm. folder. Um, the traffic ordinance, Katie has been working diligently. She had trouble getting some information. Do you have it all now? I think so. Yeah. So maybe we'll, we might be able to do that on the 24th. Um, you heard about the ballot vote June 25th. Um, you remember Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission was doing this road erosion inventory. They have a draft available and they want to meet with like um, Toby, Alfred, me, maybe if Cliff's around, we do it on a Thursday, to go over the draft. And then after the draft is done, then they would come and do a full presentation to the full board. Pam and Dean Furrier? Yep. 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 So if you guys are okay with that set up, we can tell them mm -hmm. to continue because they really want to move along. Yeah, I read that. Yeah. I didn't read the whole report. It was like... Oh, I started to, and then I got my eyes started to glaze over. Um, yeah. Uh, minutes, unless there's any other questions about stuff. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, minutes. April 11th. April 11th. I think we're all first. Hmm? Yeah. April 11th. Yeah, I think we're all set with those. I noticed you did made some comments. I made some comments. Cliff made a comment. So I think we're. Okay, oh, Phil. I meant to look specifically for filling that um, Bruce Johnson gap. Oh, I got it. You got you yeah. put that in. Yeah. Got it. Stop copying Yeah. So I put that in there. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that I put it right in the document? Are you impressed? I didn't go in today. I forgot to go in, but I am impressed with these. Thank you. You found the little pencil up there. I did. I did notice um, when I opened one document, it was in a different place. It was weird. The pencil? Maybe well, that's why I couldn't find it. It wasn't a pencil. It was something different, but I found it. But huh? I thought, huh? So unless anybody else has any other changes or. Whatever we could accept the I think changes. We've read them so many times. Well, you know what? These minutes are really important. Yeah, really yeah. important. Oh, absolutely, they have to be right. 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 I didn't read them again, but I know I read them carefully. Yeah, I looked at your it. changes. I put in the Bruce Johnson comment, mm -hmm. the, the one that I emailed everybody what he said. I didn't put it in exactly as he said it. That was awesome. But it was mm -hmm. what he said. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, do we? Right. I did read this now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so if we can accept those changes, Katie, we can approve mm -hmm. these minutes with a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, the next one's on our last meeting. Sorry, which I will recuse myself since I was not there. Great. Yeah, you can do it. I, I often recuse myself. Well, of course, I don't miss it. You were here in spirit. You we were. knew you would have rather been <laughs> here than, than, than flat on your, your back at home. Right. Um, um, yeah, I looked at your comments. They looked fine to me. There was one thing about um, the road thing, and Greg gave about the broken truck frame, mm -hmm. and Greg gave Alfred, and it, there it is. Mm. Instead of VOT, it's DOT. Department of Transportation, federal mm -hmm. DOT regulations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, federal DOT. DOT. Not DOT. Mm -hmm. But isn't anybody gonna know what that means? Can we say sure. Department of Transportation? You would just say Federal Department Greg of, of Transportation. What? Greg Will. Yeah, he's trucking <laughs> right now. He's on his way home from Pennsylvania. Oh, is he? He was in Syracuse, New York, at five o'clock this morning. There. So then PA so, picking up a load of coal. Wow. All right. Anything else? Thank you as always, Katie. You do mm -hmm. an awesome job. You do good work. She does. She's a keeper. All right. All good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so we're agreeing to the changes that are there. There are a motion to approve the May 28th meeting minutes. 
I'll move that. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And Cliff is recusing himself. All right. I would like to, um, I can either do, a, I just want like five minutes executive session for a personnel matter. Mm -hmm. Okay, at 9.22. Thank you. All right, five minutes. No, as long no. as somebody doesn't get long-winded. 